This is Kate Beckinsale. You're listening to Bacon Sale. And the award for best makeup and hairstyling goes to Kenny D. Woohoo! Oh, wow. Yes, yes. It's an honor just to be nominated. <laughs> best costume design this year goes to Joel Hilton. Yay! Woo! We really love this chicken suit. This yes. is working. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Man, it's very what, It's impressive. what got put on me when I slid down the pole to the new bacon cave. And best supporting actor? Goes to me. <laughs> As always. Oh, no, wait a minute. You're good support. What so last year when we did our Oscar show, I called the best supporting actor category the Jacob category because I was talking about how you called it for Mike, Mark Rylance the previous year. Oh. But then when I said, and this is the Jacob category, and you guys both went, Whoa, oh, Jacob's the best supporting actor on the show. You're a jerk, Joel. You, you, you have a habit of being a bully that. to Jake on this show. So you was had kind of par a for a habit. Yeah. <laughs> Had a habit. You saw some people Isn't about that right? You beautiful, sexy thing. <laughs> <laughs> what has happened? I like the old Joel. Honestly, it seems a little condescending now how nice he is. I'm uh, no. sure it does to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Big Sell. I'm Joel. I'm Kent. And Jacob. <sighs> so thanks for everyone list- for listening to last week's episode where we found out I'm a terrible dater who rolls terribly, apparently. Did we find that out or did we just confirm it? I, yeah, I, yeah, I it's know. funny because Ken's usually very enthusiastic about shows. He's like, guys, this is great. This is great. And that one, he's like, yeah, it was fine. It was okay. No, like I was, I was sad was again. Old. I was sad during the show and I was sad after. Well, we did kind of say who's the better Kent and then I lost. I'm like, this would be kind of bad for your ego probably if we'll you didn't do win. Who's the better Joel next year? We and- did that for the improv show <laughs> and, we- and I lost. <laughs> <laughs> I hope no, I can- no. no, it's basically who can have the most kids. I was just oh, make yes. that joke then I was like, that's going to go weird fast. Yeah, and, yeah, and I'm will. trying to stay right. <laughs> yes. So, But thank you everyone for listening to that. We, we love seeing, uh, love seeing listens. We have stats that show us people listen so thank you listener for listening to our show indeed and also we enjoy the feedback that we got as well and we're excited for this show it's one of our traditional ones isn't it yeah it is it's kind of fun we like these so jake what is this traditional show all about guys it's time to predict the oscars yeah this is is always a good time actually (laughs) because it's it never works out quite the way we want you know and uh and we get to make fun of everybody we do it's just a win-win all around because there's gambling there's there's hoping <laughs> there is gambling there is there tell, is gambling tell because, us more about that well the first year we bet street tacos yes because we um, worked in ogden and that's all there is to eat in ogden and they're two for a buck yeah it's then. amazing yeah and then last year it was the naked chicken chalupa which oh, good times i yeah. miss you naked chicken chalupa. and so we decided what we we're gonna bet this year and we talked about it and there is a delicious barbecue place not too far from the bacon cave we, we may have mentioned them a few times maybe not sponsored not sponsored it's mcdonald's <laughs> and the mcrib <laughs> <Ew>. <laughs> uh, best barbecue Blasphemy. in the state uh pickles no, and onions it's, so a, good. it's a barbecue place called r&r barbecue mm-hmm. it's one that uh, kent and jacob used to go to during lunch breaks when we worked in ogden but it was in salt lake i don't know how that worked out <laughs> we actually did <laughs> did we <laughs> yeah we did <laughs> uh but they have some delicious barbecue We're, like i said not a sponsor uh, but if you want to be a sponsor contact uh, big as a podcast at gmail.com. Those guys. yeah but so, uh, so here's the thing, Joel and I, you, you and I go head to head on this show. Yes. Right. Our, we're going over our picks. Then Jake criticizes us both and tells us we're both wrong. Yes. And makes his own picks. Well, only when you're wrong. Well, OK, so here's the way it works is Kent and I actually fill out paperwork written in stone and then record it on the air, our picks. Mm-hmm. And then we are very much visible of how many we got right or wrong. Yes. And then Jacob goes, well, I got them all right. <laughs> I got them all right in the office bracket, but you can't see it, listener. I got them all right in my mind, but you can't see it, listener. Yeah. Where's you, the accountability? All right. All right. I'll put it on paper for you guys this year. Okay. Oh, because you. if you that? do put it on paper, then uh-huh. you're going to be part of the contest because whoever wins. Whoever, whoever gets the most correct predictions for the for the 90th Oscars, 90th Academy Awards. Ooh, 90th. 90th. Uh, you get a caveman burger from R&R Barbecue. Tell me, Ken, what is a caveman burger from oh, R&R Barbecue? man, my mouth is watering just thinking about it. So the caveman burger is a delicious bun. There's a nice black Angus patty. I'm just going to make that up, but it sure. probably Sounds is black good. Angus. I probably is. It has pulled pork, sliced sausage, jalapenos, three kinds of cheese. Fried jalapenos. Fried ha- Thank you, Jake. And, the, and, and the, the sauce. The sausage is on above the patty and then the pulled pork on top of that. Yes. And then the fried jalapenos. It's absolutely beautiful. Pepper jack cheese now, and an amazing, when I heard about amazing this, barbecue. Sauce. When I heard about this, I thought, well, that's just disgusting. I eat healthy. But <laughs> you eat healthy. <laughs> I don't do carbs anymore, guys. Oh, ever I, have again. A, I have a friend who said that. But <laughs> but when I tried it, because I, I haven't actually got one of my own yet, but Jacob got one and I took a bite of it and it, the flavor it was like this amazing, smoky, sweet, savory flavor that just was 
fantastic. Oh, they're one of the best burgers I've ever had. Yes, for sure. So yeah, we decided. Wow, I'm getting hungry just talking about it. But we decided whoever gets the most right this year gets a caveman burger. So official finger boop on that finger boop boop. Joel, Jacob, do we do it? You got, a, you got a finger boop. Yeah. Hey, so, so, no, both of us guys, at the same time. Three-way finger boop. Oh, my no. gosh. Oh. <laughs> that felt weird. It didn't feel weird. It felt right. Uh, so so not we're... just us. It's not just us benefiting from the show, because why would anyone care if we're going to eat a uh, delicious well, burger? Well, last year we tied. Yes. It's so no one won. We'll get to that, but yeah. But this year, just like every other year, we want to bring you, the listener, in with us, if you get a perfect bracket, and yes. we're talking, you have to submit this to us by March 3rd. March 3rd, 11.59 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. You send us your bracket. If you nice. get a perfect score, we will take you with us to r and Barbecue and buy you and, a caveman yeah, burger. And pay for we it. will buy you a caveman burger or uh, equivalent uh, or equivalent, or equivalent yeah. price. I still have no, $7 left on a Taco Bell card. No, it has there. to be the caveman burger. Well, because if they're out of state, though. <clears throat> yeah, that's true. Well, if they're out of state, it's going to be an issue. They have to fly in. We don't, we don't pay for that. <laughs> oh, really? They're going to fly in for a $13 hamburger? It's $13? $13. It oh is, my gosh. It is pricey, Why did yeah. I bet this? We bet street tacos. Yeah. That was like two bucks. It's worth it. This, this, this Look at our digs. We can naked, afford this. We spent all the money on this cave. It's we true. Could, we could sell some stuff out of here. I mean, really, the rotating pizza slice you have over the giant pizza slice so you good. have over there doesn't do anything. <laughs> Why did you even buy that? Yeah, when, you're, the when you seriously, when are you going to put pizza on it? This isn't even right. It, it's automated. It's it's great. All right. <clears throat> so, like we said last year, Kent and I tied. We both got fourteen out of twenty-four right. Yes. How embarrassing! And we are going to go through all twenty-four <laughs> categories uh, and hopefully keep it uh, interesting on the more boring categories. But before we do, I'd like to talk a little bit about the Oscars in general. I don't know if it's just me. And maybe it is, but it seems like I used to be so enthusiastic about the Oscars. And then each year I get a little more jaded because last year I was like, I don't even think I'm going to even going to watch. And then I did turn it on right at the end. And I'm glad I did because that was kind of a big moment. Momentous. I watched it with this James. Is, this, is, this is called the Kent effect, Joel. I think you're familiar with it with other things. I get around him and like I get more bitter. Marvel movies, you know, Star, Star Wars. No. This is wonderful. <laughs> but I Oscars. just am not looking forward to this year. And I look at the I look at the nominees and it all just seems kind of the same. Well, Joel, it's it's, it's not same. just you. If you look at ratings for the past ten years, they've been going down every single year. Yeah, in fact, they went down. We talked about this on on last year's uh, yeah. recap show for the Oscars. But yeah, ratings went down again, and they've just been in a steady decline. And I don't think. This this year's going to be any and, different. And look, we have for the second year in a row a really mediocre host with Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah, he he campaigned extensively to come back on, and I think it's because he really? he didn't screw up, but it was seen as a screw up so badly yeah. when they got the winner wrong. Uh, not just the Academy on on the show they got it wrong. Who would be a better host, honestly, though? Faye Dunaway and oh, <laughs> Warren Beatty. <laughs> I'd watch that. <laughs> could you imagine? <laughs> But uh, who could beat Kimmel at being the host? So I don't know. Here's a couple things that are stacked together. Oh, by the way, this is Jim. This is the first host to to MC back to back since Billy Crystal in the late '90s. Okay, and, and he was much better. He's no Billy Crystal. Jimmy Kimmel's no. no Billy Crystal. Also, this ceremony is delayed because of the 2018 Winter Olympics. So another thing going against it. But then, just like I said, it feels like the same old movies getting nominated again, and it just drives me nuts. I don't know. I get bugged at it. By the way, I'm uh, with you there, too. uh, Jacob, would you like to guess on which movie has the most nominations? The most nominations overall? Shape of Water? Yeah. Yeah. 13 nominations. Number two, by the way, Kent, Dunkirk with eight eight nominations. Oh, surprising. Uh, Least nominations, you get ones like Coco, Beauty and the Beast, The Post, Victoria and Abdul. They only had two. And there's some that get like one offs, but those are like the ones they're kind of counting as like, right, I don't know, bigger. But the thing I found the most interesting is that the combined gross of the nine Best Picture nominees is 568.2 million. That puts it slightly above Kong Skull Island and slightly <laughs> below Transformers The Last Night. What? For all these movies gross Wait, combined. Including Dunkirk? Yeah. Really? Yeah. In fact, do you want to guess what Dunkirk, 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 Dunkirk made? Two thirds of that. Do you want, you want to guess yeah, what the, the highest grossing movie out of all the Best Picture nominees was? Dunkirk. Dunkirk, Dunkirk with yeah, 188 yeah. million. And then uh, Get Out was second with 175. But really, I mean, these are all Phantom and everything Thread. Everything else made like Phantom thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. Well, Phantom yeah. Thread got the lowest with six point three million out, out of the Best Picture nominees. Okay. They didn't even market that. Like that was nothing. Yeah. No. Yeah. And out of out of the fifty highest grossing movies of two thousand seventeen, only uh, fifteen films are on the list at all, and only six of those are in quote unquote bigger categories like uh, Best Picture, Best Animated Feature, or Directing. It just it, it seems it's so funny to me how off. 
Yeah, but if it, if it went by if it went by box office alone, Beauty and the Beast and Star Wars would be nominated for every single category. And I'm not saying it should be, but Transformers, but 15 <laughs> out of 50. Yeah, no, it just seems like a. Pretty it's big always experience. been off though. There are yeah. always movies that no one really watches. Were there any? Uh, I was going to say, were there any snubs that surprised you, Kent? A Wonder Woman got nothing. 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 No acting, no they, directing, they actually no special pushed it really strongly. It's almost huh. as if it was a run-of-the-mill superhero that got put up on a pedestal as an amazing superhero movie. Black Panther. <laughs> <laughs> Not that one. No, I'm saying when a certain movie about a, about a group led by Slipknot can win an Academy Award and maybe we'll Academy joke about Award this Academy Award winning Suicide Squad. Yes, precisely. I should show a little more respect. <laughs> yes. Like in Which Lope- Jacob said, and I quote, that's never going to happen. Yeah. You guys don't have a prayer. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> but I, I a lot of people. There. I guess you had a prayer. A lot <laughs> of people thought Patty Jenkins was going to get the nomination for director. Right. Because actually it did pretty well in Golden Globes and then nothing. Yeah. Logan even was nominated. And I, but thought I don't really know Wonder why. Wonder Woman's superior movie. Yeah. Logan really got kind of uh, shut out too. Yeah, it it only got writing, I believe. Yep. A screenplay. Yes. Uh, yeah. Adapted screenplay. And I just feel like it was kind of weird to not see either Logan or Wonder Woman make some sort of splash in the Academy Awards. Right. And people are up in arms. But the truth is, superhero movies don't get nominated that often. And Wonder Woman was a run-of-the-mill superhero movie. It was, it was good. Gal Gadot is great. I thought it was superior to most, honestly. But, I, but Gal Academy Gadot Award winning? superior to most. Hmm? Academy Award winning? No, I mean, it's not a best picture movie, but I thought what no. Patty Jenkins did for the movie itself. Yeah, that very, was very good. But what yeah. about Logan? Logan, it's, you know, look, if I was going... Logan's excellent. I think it's also very good. I, maybe not quite excellent, but for adapted screenplay, like, we'll get to that point. Very good. And I think James Mangold did a fantastic job. I would like to see him in Best Director as well over a lot of these people on the list. Yeah. All right. Let's get started, fellas. Yes. Yeah. Uh, before, just one more thing I want to do. Uh, were there any pet uh, nominees that you would have liked to have seen that didn't get, that, like, a snub? Ooh. It wasn't a real snub, but it was, like, one that you're like, I really wish this would have made it. Like Logan or something like that, or like an actor or actress. I, I can give you my example. Yeah, yeah, give me yours. I thought Holly Hunter should have gotten oh, for a nomination Sick. for Big Sick because she was one of those complex characters that you were like, I don't like her, but I really like her. I understand her motivations. She's acting kind of crazy. Like yeah. it was that off. But I guess when you got uh, already kind of got that uh, protective mom yes. nominees in Lady Bird and in, why am I blanking right now? Oh, for I, Tanya? Uh, for Itania, yeah, yes, you already have that already that they couldn't fit in another one. I would have loved to seen Taylor Sheridan get some love for Wind River, honestly, for oh, yeah, writing yeah. on that one. And also Your Name, not only for Best pic- for best Animated, but Best Picture as yeah, well. Yeah, Your Name didn't get nominated for Best Animated. Crazy. But Boss Baby did. Whew, we'll get there. Let's get started. <laughs> that is pretty Boss messed baby. up. All right. First category, gentlemen. And as we go through these, <clears throat> Jacob, each time you mention a movie for the first time, I'll give you the synopsis. Okay? And I may jump in there. And he may jump in. All right. Better make it good. It's not going to be. These are IMDb descriptions. First category, best supporting actor. What? We're starting out with Jacob's category? (laughs) Yeah, I already won this one. Let's move on. (laughs) Uh, Other nominees, just to be fair. We forgot to tell people. What? I guess we should tell you. If you want to find a bracket, if you wanted to fill it out, go to BaconCell.com. Yep. On on the post for the show, you'll see the bracket. You can print it off there and then submit it. You can submit it to our Facebook page. You can submit it on Twitter. Uh, You can submit it at BaconCellPodcast.gmail.com. Any of those avenues. We'll so. probably remind you again at the end. Yeah. So get your pin ready. Okay. Best Supporting Actor. The nominees are William Defoe in The Florida Project as Bobby Hicks. Set over one summer, the film follows precocious six-year-old Mooney as she courts mischief and adventure with her ragtag playmates and bonds with her rebellious but caring mother, all while living in the shadows of Walt Disney World. Essentially, it's the story of delinquent children in a rundown apartment complex in Florida. That would have been much better than the IMDb yes. description. All right, Woody Harrelson, three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, as Chief Bill Willoughby. A mother personally challenges the local authorities to solve her daughter's murder when they fail to catch the culprit. Richard Jenkins, The Shape of Water, as Giles. The coming-of-age story of the creature of the Black Lagoon. <laughs> no, Ken. Yes. <laughs> coming-of-age story? <laughs> oh, I get what's going on no. here. Yeah, yeah, you get it. I could have gotten way worse on that one. Uh, it's about a guy who trains a slayer to kill other vampires. <laughs> Not I, the wrong I've also heard this one called Grinding Nemo. Oh, no, Ken! <laughs> Family-friendly. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> anyway. I had to. The Shape of Water. You're going to hear The Shape of Water oh, a lot of times. Like said, this, yeah. this one was nominated the most out of any, but just there so you dancing. know. Here's the official description. 
At a top secret research facility in the 1960s, a lonely janitor forms a unique relationship with an amphibious creature that is being held in captivity. And by unique, if you don't pick up what that means, just listen to Ken's other clues. <laughs> but actually, when I described this to some friends at work today, I was talking to, to uh, Chad and Dave. Hey, guys. Uh, oh, Dave. Uh, yeah, it's Dave. Dave. I said, uh, Shape Water, so what's Wendy's? that one? And I said, uh, it's the one about the mute woman who falls in love with the creature from the back of Black Lagoon. And they yep. looked at me and I'm like, I'm not making that up. No, you're not. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I read like the, the parents guide to that one. And I'm like, Hmm, I don't think I'll watch that. I should have read that before I watched it. Yeah. <laughs> so you're saying clear player vid angel for me? Yes. Okay. Good to know. All right. Christopher Plummer, all the money in the world as J Paul Getty. The story of Christopher Plummer playing his age instead of a weird Kevin Spacey. I was going to say the story of Kevin Spacey getting replaced. I know, last right? Minute. Like, yeah, it's like, oh, we better give him best supporting actor just yeah. for coming in like that. Because if you don't know, Kevin Spacey was in this movie. They completely reshot everything after his uh, accusations came out. Mm-hmm. After uh, accusations against Kevin Spacey came out, and so Christopher Plummer stepped into this role in 15 days. I've yeah. already forgotten who Kevin Spacey is. Who is that? Who are you even saying? Not sure. Right now? But the real uh, plot synopsis of the, all the money in the world is. The story of the kidnapping of 16-year-old John Paul Getty III and the desperate attempt by his devoted mother to convince the, his billionaire grandfather, John Paul Getty, to pay the ransom. It's a crazy story, actually. I haven't seen the movie yet. But yeah. yeah. Then Sam Rockwell, three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, as Officer We've Jason. we already talked about that one. we already talked about that one. So, wow, that was a long way to get. It's, it's going to be front heavy, which we yes. described the movies first, but it'll get quicker it'll as we fly go through. Along. So real quick, it was William Defoe, Woody Harrelson, Richard Jenkins, Christopher Plummer, and Sam Rockwell. The front runner for this one is actually Sam Rockwell. Everyone says he'll probably win. He does a fantastic job in this movie. Yeah, he's, but, he's in my book whenever I write but, that down. There's a but. Yeah, there's always a but. Is it William Defoe's? It's a fish no. butt. <laughs> and it's in the, no. Willem Defoe will or should win. I'm going with my heart on this one, not with my head. But my other choices are generally, you know. You I, know what happens when you do that? I'm wrong. Yeah, you lose. But Willem Dafoe did so well in The Florida Project. I really recommend watching this movie just for him because you actually care for Willem Dafoe for the first time ever in a film. You, you didn't sympathize. care about him as the Green Goblin? Nah. <laughs> you didn't well, care about him in Boondock Saints? <laughs> <laughs> well, what about when he gets all shot in the jungle and stuff in uh, the original, like his breakout movie? Oh, oh yeah. Platoon. Yeah. yeah, Platoon. Yeah, you no, didn't care no, about I've, him when he shot in the I've jungle? I've always feared him. I've always feared Willem Dafoe. Well, he's right outside the window, Kent. Ah! <laughs> he's I would smiling. seriously, he's I would smiling. seriously have a really <laughs> difficult time, and I would move, which I need to anyway. So, yes. Willem Dafoe for, is my pick. Yeah, uh, this is this is. I, I said this earlier today, and I'm going to say it again. Kent said it at a serious advantage here because. As a critic, he gets these movies shoved into his mailbox and then put into his DVD player and played before him. It's so nice. You have a DVD player? and I have a catheter right here. I can seriously (laughs) just lay on the couch and people are doing all the work for me. Don't point there. That's what that is. Um, (laughs) Right there. (laughs) But uh, And so I haven't seen a lot of these yet. And I'll see a lot of them through the course of the year, the ones that interest me. But I, so I have to go and it's a weird balance I have to do because I have to do a lot of research online, but I don't want to spoil a lot of these movies. Right. So I have to kind of do research, but not too much research. And even though uh, a lot of people are saying that uh, he shouldn't win, by the way, Christopher Plummer, he is the oldest actor to be nominated for a competitive award in Academy Award history at age 88. Ooh, wow. He beats out Gloria Stewart from Titanic. Finally, so, someone takes that. <laughs> it's about time. <laughs> Gloria. She's probably not alive. She's dead. Clearly. Um, (laughs) She's definitely dead. Clearly. (laughs) She was 87. When she was nominated years ago. She's down there with Roger Deep right now. A lot of people didn't like. Oh, God. (laughs) Why did he say down there? Because she jumped over the ocean. She jumped over into the water. This is the first category. (laughs) This cannot be a two hour show. I'm ready to go. Yeah, but even though Sam Rockwell is getting a lot of negative press because a lot of people think his character was a little, you know, it's excusing racism and, or, you know, it's not. uh, That's his character. But that people get bugged by that i'm still gonna say sam rockwell three billboards best you're, supporting actor. you're probably right but i hope willem defoe gets it even though i love sam rockwell yeah he's he's kind of your guy isn't mm-hmm. he yeah all right next category is best makeup and hairstyling Woo-hoo! the nominees are the darkest hour or sorry just darkest hour gary oldman finally lives up to his last name because <laughs> he's dressed as an old man yeah uh, during the early days of World War II, the fate of Western Europe hangs on the newly appointed British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, who must decide whether to negotiate with Adolf Hitler or fight against an incredible odds. What, what, what? <laughs> <laughs> How British am I? How British am I? Next nominee is Victoria and Abdul. A Dane plays the Queen and ends racism. <laughs> <laughs> Completely. Queen Victoria <laughs> strikes up an unlikely friendship with a young Indian clerk named Abdul Karim. 
And that's uh oh, what's her name? Dame Judi Dame Judi Dench. Dame, Dame Judi Dench. Judi Dench. Judi Dench. Judi And the final nominee is Wonder. The prequel to Mask teaches the no. world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, 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 oh, that's terrible. Can I continue? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Teaches the world not to bully. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. It's a good based, movie. Based on the New York Times bestseller, Wonder tells the incredibly inspiring and heartwarming story <laughs> of August Pullman. I'm a, a monster. Boy, a boy with facial differences who enters fifth grade attending a mainstream elementary school for the first time. I am a terrible person. <laughs> you are a terrible person. <laughs> So I'll go first. Welcome on this to Bacon Sale. <laughs> yeah, I'll go first on this one. Uh, it's got to go to Darkest Hour for some reason. The Academy, the Academy loves biopics. Yes, they love seeing people play other people, especially when they look like the other people. So you put a fat suit on Gary Oldman, give him you know an accent, give him the glasses, mm-hmm. and they're going to give it to him. Accent isn't he British already? But he how pulls British it, is he? Yeah, <laughs> he pulls yeah. it off wonderfully. Gary Oldman actually once said he has a hard time remembering how he actually speaks. Because he always does voices in the in the movies. Hmm. Yeah, he has such a diverse range, honestly, and it's it's darkest hour for sure. Okay, we okay. agree. We got we got to disagree on some of these, otherwise we're going to be buying each you other. Cave on the last one. Yeah, we disagree on the first one. Yeah. Next category is best costume design. The first nominee is Beauty and the Beast. A tale as old as time gets a fresh new digital coat. <laughs> An unnecessary adaptation of the fairy tale about a monstrous looking prince and a young woman who fall in love again. It says unnecessary? Uh, I may have added something in there. <laughs> that's straight from IMDb. Next category is Darkest Hour. I've heard of this one. Yeah, and that's the Winston Churchill one. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> Phantom Thread. Daniel Day Lewis is a dressmaker and is probably crazy. That's the, I haven't seen it. It's actually a very good one, but uh, set in 1950s London, Reynolds Woodcock is a renowned dressmaker whose fastidious life is disrupted by a young, strong-willed woman, Alma, who becomes his muse and lover. And this is the one Daniel D. Lewis has said is his final movie. Yes. He's saying, I'm retiring after this, and everyone's like, no, don't go. He's like, I must. I'm so tired of character acting all the time. He probably doesn't know who he is, really. Method acting. Honestly. Oh, yeah. He's probably broken. Yeah. He's broken for sure. Because that all those drink, milkshakes he drink. But then... He drinks what? it up. I drink your uh, milkshake. Oh. Yeah. That took me a second. Next is uh, The Shape of Water. Mute Woman. Black Lagoon. Victorian Abdul. Okay. Uh, King and I, but not. So, best costume design. The winner for me for this one is The Shape of Water. Really? Yeah. It's a great period piece. Honestly, like as far as... it's like, set in the 60s. 50s, I believe. Is it 60s? It's I'm in 60s say, on the synopsis. Yes, that's when it's set. But as far as like actual, like how everyone looks, the dresses, the suits, everyone looks great. And then, of course, I mean, there's, and I guess this is more makeup and hairstyling as well, but everyone looks pitch perfect for the time, which I thought was the 50s. When I've heard Listen, so maybe I'm wrong. It's like this, this alternative universe I've heard as yes. well. So, yeah. But I'm not going to agree with you. Okay. Because I'm going to say it's a uh, Phantom Thread. I mean, the movie is about really? costume designing. So costume designers are going to fawn all over it because it's all about, you know how Ratatouille created that kind of love for food when he tasted it and you get that kind of, you sense the senses he's sensing. Cause I know, what the show's. but Ken does not. I don't feel that. <clears throat> but they, they tried. Yes. I believe Phantom Thread's going to do the same thing where uh, costume designers are going to watch it and go, yes. Interesting. This is how it is. It's not just costume designers that are voting though. No, but I feel like the Academy is uh, a whole bunch of costume designers. Yeah, basically. All right. Next category. Best documentary feature length. First nominee is Abacus, small enough to jail. A small financial institution called Abacus becomes the only company criminally indicted in the wake of the United States 2008 mortgage crisis. What? I just I just zoned out right there. You, you can zone something? out for all these. Everyone else okay. is going to. Yeah. Go okay. too quick. All right. So well, that's uh, the one. Yeah. It's the one they were going after all the big banks and they were too big to fail. This is too small to jail or small enough to jail. Yeah. All right, next, category, next nominee is Faces Places, which is fun because it rhymes. Uh, so the director and a photographer journey through rural France and form an un- unlikely friendship. Rural. 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 rural juror. All right, next nominee is Icarus. When Brian Fogel sets out to uncover the truth about doping in sports, a chance meeting with a Russian scientist transforms his story from a personal experiment into a geopolitical thriller involving dirty urine, unexplained death, and Olympic gold exposing the biggest scandal in sports history. Ooh, geopolitical. And these are true. Like, I these heard are that word. Yeah, this is a documentary. This yeah. is about the Russian doping, and it, some say it, it's one of the reasons that uh, yeah Russia that Russia got banned from this Olympics. Last men in Aleppo. What's Aleppo? Uh, it's a place in Khaled. Oh, yeah, I know that <laughs> yeah. joke. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Khaled Mahmoud and Subhi uh, volunteered at the White Helmets, trying to save lives of hundreds of victims at besieged city during the Sy- Syrian civil war. That's terribly worded. Who was the guy? I can't think of his name. I um, didn't know what Aleppo. Gary was. Johnson. 
No, but remember, <laughs> so, uh, so last year, Kent and I both voted for The White Helmets, yes. a short documentary. Also and Gary is, Johnson. And it's an amazing documentary. If you mm-hmm. haven't seen The White Helmets, it's heartbreaking, but it's amazing. So this, this is the feature. like A deeper dive. Yeah. Yes. Cool. All right. And the final nominee is Strong Island. That's where Except- I was born. <laughs> Wonder Man. This documentary in- interrogates murderous fear and racialized perception and reimagines the wreckage in Catastrophe's Wake, can- challenging us to change. And those are like a tongue twister. Wow, they are. Yes. Realizing the wreckage of the... Yeah. So, yeah, these are documentaries. I haven't seen any of these, but I did watch all the trailers. Oh, you did? I did. I didn't even do that. What? I went for the one that rhymed. Faces Places. Oh, God. <laughs> so, the thing about Faces Places is it's this kind of older actress. She's much older now, but mm-hmm. she was, you know, a star back in the 50s, maybe. And this kind of cool art artist Mm -hmm. and he creates these huge pictures of people and puts them on the sides of walls oh nice and then she follows him around and they're talking to people and getting to know people as they do this journey but it's definitely not the one i picked after looking at it i definitely thought it was icarus because i was completely compelled it felt like this breaking news story on the trailer about they say essentially and this is just what the documentary says i'm not saying anything putin but just in case you're <laughs> uh, don't, listening don't do that just in case he's listening willem defoe's back and he has a gun <laughs> <laughs> but it's and he's said smiling that there has <laughs> never been any anti-doping campaign in the russian olympics it's all been falsified they've been doping the entire time since basically the olympics have been around since uh, Ivan Drago, I know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We yeah. saw that yeah. in Rocky yep. Four. Yeah, it's true. And that's why I'm going with the Icarus because I feel it, it was a, pick. it was a documentary that made some would say made a difference in the real world. Okay. You know what's fun though? They still don't win everything. Yeah, that's yeah. true. <laughs> if they can't win with doping. All right. Next category is best sound editing. Yay! I like this stuff. Now, once again, just because uh, we do this every time, sound editing is the creation of new sounds. Yes, or yes. sounds that don't actually exist when they're Joel, filming. Could yes. you demonstrate how so do you create not a always, new sound? It's not always alien Rare. sounds, <laughs> but it's sounds that are actually not happening while they're filming. Yeah, they have to create it as if you were there, exactly. or a new UFO sound or whatnot. Yeah, and then putting it in the movie. Yes, and then sound mixing is just keeping the levels all together, making it sound good. Yes. All right, so but these are basically the same nominees for each of these. Oh is no, it, it's exactly the is same. Okay. This is the this is the oh, really? they matched five out of five category oh, five yeah. out of five movies in these two categories um, for the first time ever. Wow. Okay, let's do this. All right, so, so I just sound, have to read this one once. So, so sound, best editing, sound first. editing and sound mixing. Okay, let's do it. I mean, it's the same one. Yeah. Uh, first is Baby Driver. Baby breaks the law in this glorious two-hour music video. <laughs> nice. And uh, I was going to say, after being coerced into working for a crime boss, played by Christopher Plummer, a young getaway driver finds himself taking part in a heist doomed to fail. Yeah, perfect. You didn't even notice, did you? Uh, yeah, because we said the same thing. We, we matched it. No, played by Christopher Plummer. You said Christopher Plummer? I did. Because ah. Kevin Spacey's in that movie. <laughs> uh, film geek joke was focused. <laughs> yeah. All right. It was a good effort. Next nominee is Blade Runner 2049. Ryan Gosling finally gets to say, hey, Android girl. <laughs> do androids dream of electric Ryan Gosling? They, they definitely do. <laughs> a young Blade Runner's discovery of a long buried secret leads him to track down former Blade Runner Rick Deckard, played by Harrison Ford, who's doing his victory lap and has been missing for 30 years. <laughs> I like the victory I like lap. These additions, yeah. yes. Yeah. I'll pay attention now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next nominee is Dunkirk. Christopher Nolan travels back in time to literally film the Dunkirk evacuation. I love the joke in that one. This is really yeah, funny. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he couldn't have done it better you're if like, he was actually there. You're like, I love Christopher Nolan. Allied I soldiers from Belgium, the British Empire, and France are surrounded by the German army and evacuated during a fierce battle in World War II. Oh, wait. I'm, all Kent is hearing right now is Nolan, 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 Nolan. I heart him. <laughs> and you killed him for Joel. <gasps> yes. All right. Next nominee is The Shape of Water. Mute lady fish person? Mute lady meets fish person? No, they're one thing. Yeah. <clears throat> <All right. laughs> Stop. <laughs> All right. Twisting Next my nominee words. is Star Wars, the last, last, last Jedi. Luke finds out what it sounds like to milk a bantha. <laughs> <laughs> and tastes like. <sighs> Ew. <laughs> yeah, but you're right. <laughs> Ray develops her newly discovered abilities with the guidance of Luke Skywalker, who is. Un- no, she doesn't. Who is <laughs> 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 who is this not strong? Okay, no, she, she, he didn't do can, anything to can, help her. Can we stop right there? You don't even have to finish that. You try to convince yourself so much that you actually don't hate this movie as much as you do, <laughs> but there are reasons, and we will talk about them later. Why this is a terrible movie? Yeah, we'll get there. Uh, who is unsettled by the strength of her powers? Meanwhile, the resistance pairs for battle with the first order. 
Right. So yeah. So Kent, that was this is this is hard for Kent because it's Nolan versus Edgar Wright. So, yeah, it's crazy. So those are his two favorite directors. So answer first, sound editing, and then answer next, just sound mixing. So, so I the had same to pick. Nominees. I had to pick one of. So uh, you just did one of each. One of each. <laughs> did you? Yeah, I had to. Oh, okay. So for sound editing, I went with Dunkirk. So you went Dunkirk as in they were adding in sound effects after the fact. So editing, yeah, they added in like like every bullet hit, and I'm talking like. This movie is so they intense. They weren't using real bullets. I thought uh, in Tristan like practical effects. What yeah, a, baby, he was. Down. Yeah. yeah, but you know, like even when those kids were in the submarine, and it's just like you just hear the bullet go. Doof. I mean, and everything they added, everything was so intense. And I think it it did this better than it did the sound mixing. Although I think that was very cool as well. It puts mm-hmm. you in the movie. But I picked Baby Driver for that one. For which for editing for mixing. Oh, for mixing. So okay. Dunkirk editing, Baby Driver mixing because the way they played the music with the bullets, yeah, Baby and Driver the cars, mixing. Wiki, wiki. everything works so perfectly. And it's one of the best things, maybe besides et- film editing, that it did. And I wish, I wish, Kent, that I could give some love to Baby Driver because I was thoroughly impressed. And if, if, I, were, if I were voting with my heart, Baby Driver would have gotten it. Okay. However, I gave best sound editing to Shape of Water because of... Have you seen it? No. I, have, okay. I haven't seen that one. But okay. uh, because of the fish noises. That what makes, kind of noises? That makes sense. <laughs> don't don't keep playing into my joke. Um, <laughs> right. And then best sound mixing. Like he doesn't even know. But best sound mixing I gave to Dunkirk because I okay. felt like, and this is something we talked about on the review. Yeah, they sacrifice dialogue for emotion a lot of times, mm-hmm. where you're feeling the emotion of the moment because the sound is so loud you can't hear what anyone's saying. And I remembered feeling that in the movie. And when theater. you're in the planes with Tom Hardy, that yeah. was. I've been shot and I must go down. <laughs> but everything that the rattling, you're like, yeah. oh, this is dangerous. And so I felt the sound mixing. Uh, yeah, sound mixing was done very well in Dunkirk. I think the awards going there. OK. All right. Next category is best supporting actress. Jacob's category. I already won best supporting actor. <laughs> but you'll get actress, too. You think so? Yeah, I am pretty diverse. All, All right. right. Here we go. So first nominee is Mary J. Blige in Mudbound. Mudbound is, uh, here's the synopsis. Two men return home from World War II to work on a farm in rural, there's that word again, rural rural Mississippi. Rural. It's it's pronounced rural. Rural Mississippi, where they struggle to deal with racism and adjusting to life after war. No quips? No jokes. All right. (laughs) Let's stay away from that one. Well, I was going to say, I I can make a little joke. And it's just the fact, oh, it's a post-war drama about racism? How did it even make it into the Academy Awards? (laughs) Did really well at Sundance as well. Oh, I bet. When you said little joke. I thought you were. And I haven't seen it, so I don't know if it's good or bad, but yeah, I just saw that and I'm like, good. oh, okay. It's quite good. I thought there was going to be a jab at a short person in that movie or something. But. All right, next. Like my date the other week. Hey, exactly. All right. Uh, next nominee is Allison Janey in I, Tonya. Competitive ice skater Tonya Harding rises among the ranks at the U.S. Figure Skating Championships, but her future in the activity is thrown into doubt when her ex husband intervenes. Wow. Okay, next nominee is uh, Leslie Manf- Manville in the Phantom Thread. Already That's talked about that one. Dressmaker. Uh, next nominee is Lori Metcalf in Ladybird. In 2002, an artistically inclined 17 year old girl comes of age in Sacramento, California. Otherwise known as Aunt Jackie isn't too shabby in a standard coming of age indie flick. Wait, but Sir Sharona not. You didn't like Sir Sharon in it? I'm talking about Aunt Jackie because that's from Roseanne. That's Laurie Metcalf. Yeah, she, she ain't too shabby. Yeah. But that you said she's ain't too shabby. What about Sir Sharon? We'll get there. Hmm. Okay. Will we though? <laughs> Next nominee: Octavia Spencer in The Shape of Water. Glub glub kiss kiss. <laughs> now you're talking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can't come up with these All every right. time though. No, There's 13 of them. That's it. That's it. So I do tell you, you go first on this one. Okay, I'll go first on this one. And if it's not Alice and Janney, I don't know what it's going to be because everything, all the signs are pointing to Alice and Janney who pay, plays this abusive, horrible mother to Tanya Harding. If it's not her, it would be Laurie Metcalf because she actually does a fantastic job. She really does. Are, like, you, are you, you saying Laurie Metcalf is your choice? I'm not, actually. Okay. But it, she would be the first runner up. Like, Jake, you saw this one, right? Ladybird, yeah, I saw Ladybird. Yeah, and she did a great job. But you kind of hate her. Yeah, a very no, clingy mom. No, she does. But that's she what does the Academy excellent. likes. They like complex characters. But and here's the thing: Al- Allison Janney, she will win, and she is my pick. Although, hi, five. You'll never see her, Joel, because in a clean flicks version or edited version, you'll never see Allison Janney's character. Oh yeah. In fact, she's only Allison Janney I that saw, swears a lot. I saw J.K. Simmons in Whiplash. 
that's in the true. Version. No, this one, she's swearing I'll every see. second. I just won't hear. Yeah, that's true. She'll just be muted the entire she time. She will win, but really she's just an extreme loud version of herself. So I is don't it, think she should win, but no. she will. Okay, Kent. Uh, since we're talking about I, Tanya right now, I just want to ask. Yes. Did you like the movie? I did. Because it's Margot Robbie. Yes. Margot Robbie does a great job. The movie is a little long, actually. She doesn't do great enough, apparently. No. She well, we'll get well, there. Well, we'll get there. Yeah. Because she's right. nominated. Okay, next category is Best Foreign Language Film. The first nominee is A Fantastic Woman from Chile. So she's from Chile? Like the, the title's oh. A Fantastic Woman from Chile or it's A Fantastic Woman <laughs> from the country of Chile? It, probably both. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, probably so. Uh, Marina, a transsexual woman who works as a waitress who moonlights as a nightclub singer, is bowled over by the death of her older boyfriend. Give it all the Oscars! <laughs> <laughs> next nominee is The Insults, and this one's from Lebanon. After an emotional exchange between a Lebanese Christian and a Palestinian refugee escalates, the men end up in a court case that gets national attention. And these these are foreign. These are uh, fictional films, what I mean. Yes. These aren't documentaries, but yeah. All right. Next one is Loveless. This is from Russia. A couple going through a divorce must team up to find their son who has disappeared during one of their bitter arguments. Next one is On Body and Soul. This one's from Hungary, like the wolf. When Slaughterhouse were... <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, I can't like that one. I, I did too. Oh, good. Uh, when slaughterhouse workers Andre and Maria discover they share the same dream, where they meet in a forest as a deer and fall in love, they decide to make their dreams come true, but it's difficult in real life. What the, what? <laughs> yep. I don't even know what you yeah. just said. Well, don't worry about trust it. me. I, I watched the trailer and I went, I have no idea what that movie's about. And then I read the synopsis and I went, okay, that kind of makes sense, Does I it? guess. Okay. Uh, None of us will ever watch it. Probably not. All right. Next one and last one is The Square. This one, this one comes from Sweden. In the sequel to The Circle, The Square... I'm kidding, it's not. <laughs> it's yeah, not. Yeah. A prestigious Stockholm Museum's chief art curator finds himself in times of both professional and personal crisis as he attempts to set up a controversial new exhibit. All right, guys, what'd you pick? Did you watch any trailers for these ones? No, I did not. Because these were actually pretty fascinating. Really? Yeah, like, okay. watch, watching these trailers was kind of an experience in itself. I know Peggy from Mad Men stars in the square. Yeah, Elizabeth Moss in the square. And I wasn't sold on, you want to go first in this one? Or do you want me to go first? I'll go first. Okay. I'm just going to pick a fantastic woman because based on that description alone, like it's going to win all the Oscars. It looked so bizarre. Did it? Like okay. there's a part where she's jumping on the roof of a car, like a supervillain. It was weird. Okay. I, I couldn't really get past that one. Loveless looked really intense, kind of like a prisoner's vibe to it. Wow. Uh, but I have to give it to the square because when I read the description, it didn't do anything for me. And I watched the trailer and I thought this looks quirky and dark. And it's all a conversation about what is art in like kind of a mocking sense. Like at one point he's like, if I take your purse and put it in the corner over there, is it art? And she's like, ah, uh, so it's not like an elitist movie. It's like, what is art no, to you? Yeah, I wish I could, t I could equate it to something else. It felt almost like a, I can't really making fun of the snobs a little bit, a little bit, but it was like kind of this tongue in cheek humor that was going in with it as it was going forward. And I think the Hollywood like this one, which is why I picked it the square, because I think it's kind of mocking the genre while staying in the genre. Okay. Uh, but yeah, watch the trailer for the square. And if it, I, I found it the most intriguing out of any of these ones I watched. Pause the show. Let's watch it right now. Okay, and we're done. We we're back. <laughs> okay, and next uh, category. We did it. You lied to my the listener. Heart is broken. <laughs> <laughs> the next category is best animated short film. First one. This is called the uh, the pre Pixar category. Yes, I'll just give the title here: uh, Dear Basketball. Kobe Bryant writes poetry and loves balls. That's actually very close to the one I had, so we'll just let that go. <laughs> it's an animated telling of Kobe Bryant's poem, Dear Basketball, and this is the first NBA player ever to receive an Academy Award nomination. Yeah, it's Kobe Bryant. He didn't get it in, in Shazam. Kazam. <laughs> Wait, Shaq didn't. Yeah, it wasn't Kazam. Sinbad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 nothing in uh gosh what was the looney tune one the oh space jam space oh jam. space jam yeah, yeah, space jam. oscar winner space jam huh. yeah. i mean suicide squad right yeah all right next nominee How is dare you sir have some respect <laughs> yeah garden party in a deserted rich house a couple of amphibians explore their surroundings and follow their primal instincts <laughs> they, they've been watching <laughs> the shape of water said. i guess that's what it said <laughs> All right. <laughs> no yeah. other jokes came. That was a nope, surprise. Nope. Okay. Uh, next one's uh, titled Lou. Pixar creates a demon octopus that gets revenge <laughs> on schoolyard bullies. A Pixar short about a lost and found box and the unseen monster within. This is the one that played before Cars 3. It's at the playground and there's a lost and found box and the parts come together to make a monster. But Ooh. it's a nice monster. He's trying to help kids. Sure he is. Mm -hmm. Revenge. Yep. Uh, next nominee is Negative Space. Even though Sam's father is hardly ever home because he's often away on business trips, he's able to connect with his son by teaching him how to pack a suitcase. What? Yeah. 
Yeah. It's and this one this one has a very paper mache look to it. Like yes. it looks like it's kind of I don't it's know. It's very unique. Yeah. Unique looking. All right. So final nominee is Revolting Rhymes. Two half hour animated films based on the much loved rhymes written by Roald Dahl and illustrated by Quentin Blake. Basically Hoodwink right. twenty seventeen. Yeah. I'll okay, go first on the last one. one. Let's hear it. So I did watch the trailers for all these ones and Garden Party looked real. It was Yeah, no, it looks great. I watched that one watched, like actual frogs. But there's not much story to it. But then I was like, well, I guess this is best animated. It's kind of like the Guardians of Gahul with frogs. Uh, Don't equate it to that. (laughs) But it looked eerily real, like the landscapes, the animals. It was kind of bizarre to be like, this is animated. And so I'm going to give it to Garden Party. Wow. No, no Pixar in this one, huh? No, Lou was fine. Yeah. But I wasn't enamored with it. I'm going to give it to negative space because the the paper mache look is really cool. Even though Pixar is going to win. The Pixar, no, they're going to win for something else. So I think this one will go to negative space because the humans in this one, they look very like a very boring and they don't, they move very stiffly. Whereas the clothes in this one, they like, it moves like an ocean. The clothes fold themselves into the suitcase. It's, it's a very unique, incredibly unique. All right. Next category is the best animated feature film. The first one, the first nominee is the Academy Award, soon to be Academy <laughs> Award winning The Boss Baby. Ooh, a horrifying and... <laughs> A horrifying and confusing cartoon about how babies are made. (laughs) (laughs) A suit-wearing briefcase carrying baby pairs up with a seven-year-old brother to stop the dastardly plot of the CEO of Puppyco. (laughs) Oh, no. All right, next one is The Breadwinner. A headstrong girl in Afghanistan disguises herself as a boy in order to provide for her family. Mm. Basically, Mulan. That one's going to win just from that. Uh, Coco. The Book of Life, but with more genealogy. (laughs) Uh, aspiring, music, aspiring musician Miguel, confronted with his family's ancestral ban on music, enters the land of the dead to find his great-great-grandfather, a legendary singer. Sounds cute. I still haven't watched it. I still haven't either. <laughs> uh, next nominee is Ferdinand. The story of an unconventional bull <laughs> played by... John Cena! Ba-ba-ba! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love John Cena. <laughs> he's making a lot of movies lately. He's, he's making a lot yeah. of he's making a lot of uh, cameos here on Bacon Cell too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, next nominee is Loving Vincent. In a story depicted, he's not an amphibian, is he? No, no, no. He's just, not a fish. In a story depicted, <laughs> d- just listen to this. this I, guys, this one looks good. Thank you, Evan. In a story depicted in oil painted animation, a young man comes to the last hometown of painter Vincent Van Gogh to deliver the troubled artist's final letter and ends up investigating his final days there. So I've seen most of this one so far, Loving Vincent, and it's beautiful. This is the world's first fully oil-painted feature film. Yeah, like, interesting. It's not like cells hand-drawn. This is like oil paintings that they're turning into animation. And it looks like Vincent Van Gogh paintings, but like... They do. Real. Like, it's, this sounds it, like a crap ton of work. So it it no, it's like. an incredible amount of work. Saoirse Ronan and Chris O'Dowd are in it. Yes. Um, and they look like when you saw their face, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's Saoirse Ronan's play, face in an oil painting. Yeah. No, it looks incredible, but I think the story that what they What do they do with here, all these oil paintings when they're done? That's a good question. That's a lot. Look yeah. it up. Let's, let's there, pause the show and look it up. 32 frames a second? I mean, yeah. That's, yeah. that's a lot. It's, it's not quite great. It could have been great, but the story isn't fantastic. I'm assuming there's tiny two. Tiny boil paintings. All right. That's the last one. All right. So. I haven't seen this movie either, but I'm going to Coco. Like, everyone's seen, have seen to, any? Have you seen any of these? Yeah. I most watched most of Loving Vincent and Boss Baby, unfortunately. And he loves Ferdinand, mm-hmm. too. An emoji movie, which was snubbed, obviously. Oh, why? <laughs> uh, emoji movie. Grumpy face, cry face. So you're picking Coco? I'm picking Coco. I'm going with Boss Baby. No, you're not. I'm not. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I was like, that's he's, a brave choice, sir. It's, it's Pixar's to lose. Pixar's going to uh, get this one. Yeah, so. because everyone really liked this one. People are crying, and people even said, I might feel things Pe- in Coco. People said they want, made it, want, it made them want to do their family history. Are we doing it? All right. <laughs> Next category is best original score. Ooh, okay. yeah, you guys, don't, care. For this you guys one. don't even care about this. We should just skip it, right? We, just go Ken on? and I had so much fun doing this. Oh. Yes. So we have original scores. And for this Joel, one, you got this. Yeah, you got I, I, got, okay. I got the clips. Yeah. The first nominee is Dunkirk. Feel that? Anxiety. So good. I love that. that stress. Sense. Yeah, we listened to it before and Jacob's like, what is this? It's good stress. Okay. All right, next nominee is Phantom Thread. Ah, I'm in a restaurant, and there's a fountain. Our next musical number <laughs> will be by Johnny Greenwood. Next nominee is The Shape of Water. The Pie Makers in this one, right? It's kind of eerie sounding. No, it is. We don't get enough whistling in uh, scores these days. 
I know Kent loves that. City of stars. Actually, I didn't play that clip. That was actually Willem Dafoe whistling it outside yeah. the window. <laughs> whistling, by the way, whistling creeps me out so much. I know. That's why I added Willem I Dafoe to it. it. Now picture Willem. Uh, okay, just I want you to picture Willem Dafoe. Okay, I'm closing my eyes. Okay. Oh my gosh. I actually got the chills. <laughs> <laughs> and then he just puts his hand around your neck. I feel like Willem Dafoe would be smiling as he's whistling. Like he smiles. He can still make the whistle sound. smile and whistle? It's Willem Dafoe, man. It's him. Yeah, it's him. All right. Uh, next is Star Wars Last Jedi. <laughs> Which title is this? It's generic Star Wars music. Wow, it's very... A lot of percussion. <laughs> oh, it's fine. It's very cool. And finally? It's only worse than the others. Three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. Hmm. Kind of a southern flavor to it. Like a like an old western. Yeah. Yeah, okay. that's, that's pretty good. Seriously, okay. I, I do want to complain a little bit. Uh, I wonder what Kent chose. <laughs> I, I sure didn't pick Star Wars because Joel <laughs> oh. actually found a... He went to the track listing of Star Wars, and I thought he was telling jokes, right? Because he was like, hey, this song is called... <laughs> fun with Finn and Rose. Fun with Finn and Rose. And I was like, ha, that's funny, because that was really like the worst part of the movie. And I'm like, nope. And I showed him, I showed him the... That's the track. Of- fun with Finn and Rose. And no then, one had fun with Finn and Rose. Exactly. And then he sent me a track called... Except for Finn and Rose. Canto Bite. Yeah. And he, you know, it's basically... The cantina theme. If it were done by elementary school kids? Yes. And it was terrible. No, it really, it, it felt like someone said, hey, we can't use the cantina band music. Let's make up our own generic uh, cantina band music. It's like John Williams is on life support. I'm not kidding. And they're kidding. just making him like wave his wand around and they're just playing whatever. <laughs> I'm not kidding when I say there's a kazoo in the in that song, Canto Bite. Go look it up. But this is John Williams. This is his 51st nomination. He broke his he own died record. died four years ago. <laughs> <laughs> he broke his own record and is still the most nominated living individual ever. It's because they have to nominate him. And it's because it's Star Wars. They're like, yeah, it's He's probably the Meryl Streep of the music industry. Yeah, sure. Overrated. All right, Ken, what are you going with? Uh, I want to talk about all these because Dunkirk is fantastic. It's, it's Hans Zimmer's maybe least instrumental as far as like uh, memorable themes. But it's so fantastic. Gets you into the movie. I want to go for three billboards, but there's only really 15, 20 minutes of actual music. And there's just a lot of... Yeah, it was the shortest like soundtrack. Like 20 songs. minutes of it. Yeah. But it's cool and it's very fitting. But the winner will be The Shape of Water. I'm going to agree with you. Okay. Because I put Shape of Water because... It, well, okay. So the soundtrack actually is really good. Uh, it's It's got that kind of haunting theme throughout of it. Throughout it. But also it has this kind of throwback hits to 1940s jazz and 30s and some 60s uh, samba. And it's got a really good feel to it, a very unique feel. But uh, just for my own benefit, I want to say that Dunkirk was probably the most enjoyable to listen to while doing work. Because yeah. I worked so fast. Did you say Dunkirk. enjoyable? I don't think that's the word you mean. It, it was pumping me up as I was working. Everything else, And then I listened to Phantom Thread and I wanted to fall asleep. I would never download uh, Shape of Water, but it will win. I would download Dunkirk and also Three Billboards. I, I, of, I, of the I download Shape of Water. Hmm. I liked it. All right, next category, uh, Best Production Design. And this is just the look of the movie, set design, all that. Yeah, there's actually two nominees in each. It's set design and production. And we yes. talked about all these, so this category should go quick. All right, so Beauty and the Beast. Yep, uh, remake. <laughs> uh, Blade Runner 2049. Remake. Darkest well, sequel. Hour. Sequel. Remake. Sequel. And that's uh, they, the none of these, darkest hour is a remake. One of these is a remake. It's a remake darkest of a, hour of a is a remake yeah. of history. Pitch black yeah, history, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pitch black. Uh, Dunkirk remake. <laughs> the shape of, of water. every World War II movie we've seen. Wow, I'm kidding. It's basically the same thing. And the Shape of Water remake of the Creature from the Black Lagoon with a sexy twist. Nice. <laughs> yes, that is his move. <laughs> okay, who, who wins? Family friendly. <laughs> I took it to the line. You don't have to jump over the line. You know I have to jump over the line. It's me. <sighs> anyway, right, Joel, you pick. I picked Shape of Water. I just from the trailer alone, it creates a world that is both fantasy and reality. I believe this title is called The Sexy Twist. And retro. And so I want to put a give to Shape of Water. Yeah, right. they actually have this government facility that feels like it's straight out of like 1950s paranoid. Compton. You know, yeah, ex- yes. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, everything about it, it feels very, very tight, very almost uh, claustrophobic because you feel like you can't escape. And then the whole movie is about like, get, trying to get this fish man to escape and they, they nail it. Whether it's outdoors, indoors, the production of this movie is great. Shape yeah. of Water. Guillermo del Toro. All right. Uh, next category is best. We agree on that one? Yes. High five. You agree. 
Best visual effects. First nominee is Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Uh, I, by the way, I don't know what it, I don't know what it says about me, but I always seem to have like I don't see a lot of the best picture winners. Usually, mm-hmm. it's like you know less than half, right? But I always seem to see all of the best visual effects movies well, because these, these are the movies for everybody. This is the throwaway category, and you're going to see Academy. it win with a few of these nominations. Yeah, okay. So Blade Runner Indeed. that was the re- the sequel to Blade Runner thirty years ago. Our next nominee is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. A ragtag crew looks for ego while James Gunn pads his own. <laughs> the Guardians must fight to keep their newfound family together as they unravel the mystery of Peter Quill's true parentage. Next uh, nominee is Kong. Skull Academy Island. Award nominated Kong Skull Island. Well, we can say that about Guardians of the Galaxy, too. It's funnier to say Kong Skull Island. <laughs> yes. Uh, next nominee is the Academy Award nominated Kong Skull Island. <laughs> Get these Mother Hubbard lizards off oh, my no. Mother Hubbard Island. I'm tired of these monkey fighting snakes on this Monday <laughs> yeah. to Friday plane, as they said on TV. A team of scientists explore an uncharted island in the Pacific, venturing into the menu of Mighty Kong, and must fight to escape a primal Eden. Oh no, primal Eden. <laughs> Sounds kind of nice. Yeah. Uh, next nominee is uh, this little thing called Star Wars The Last Jedi. Pew, pew, pew. Force powers you've never seen before and hopefully never will again. <laughs> now two-time Oscar nominated. Yeah. Yeah. And finally, War for the Planet of the Apes. Andy Serkis is more lifelike here than he was in 13 Going on 30. <laughs> <laughs> he was in 13 Going on 30? Yes, he was. He was her boss. Oh, wow. Andy Serkis was? Yep. Wow. Uh, after the apes suffer in unimaginable losses, Caesar wrestles with his darker instincts and begin his own mythic quest to avenge his kind and take the one ring back to Mordor. Interesting. This is kind of a fun one because you didn't care. Blade. <laughs> I got it. I listen to your jokes. Sorry, I just get so distracted. Uh, Blade Runner is so it it's so cool because visually Blade Runner is amazing and it matches everything that the original Blade Runner did and excels. Star Wars, they put their money on screen and they you can tell like there's no bad CG here. But I'm giving it to War for the Planet of the Apes. Oh, of course you would. Because this is almost like, mm-hmm. look, give this movie a tribute for what it has done. These apes have more character than most actors out there. So, yeah, Planet of the Apes for Once sure. Once you go start mm-hmm. an apes rights movement. <laughs> <laughs> I have. Oh. Uh, and I thought it was so weird that Kong Skull Island was on here because the ape looked good. I guess. I didn't think it looked as good as the 2005 King Kong. But that was just the weird thing about it is I was like, why is that on there? But I... It is and, weird. and Guardians of the Galaxy had a lot of cool visuals. I Especially like the, the hologram when he was telling the story of him. Those were really cool visual effect to watch. But I'm going to give it to War of the Planet of the Apes also. Yeah. Because uh, it made me forget I was watching CGI as I was watching it. Even though I my heart wanted to give it to Blade Runner 2049. Yeah, me too. I have to go with my head on this one and say where the Planet Apes is going to get it. I think Blade Runner might win that. I hope so. I hope you're right. All right. Next category. I hope to Kong you're right. You hope to Kong. Uh, best film editing. First nominee is Baby Driver. Gunfire soundtrack. Dunkirk. <laughs> or that. <laughs> uh, I, Tanya. Whack. Ah! <laughs> the Shape of Water. Bloop, bloop, bloop. <laughs> <laughs> Every time <laughs> I don't know if I can get to the next one Three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri They're red billboards All three of them <laughs> They're red That's, No no. They're red You're right I just wish you came up with something better I was <laughs> so ready I got another I haven't seen three billboards you have a better one, Kent? It's, it's a lot of swear words It's hard to make fun of a movie like that You know it, it's, it's true It's, it's a, little, a very serious subject yes. Alright, that's it What's your, what's your picks? So film editing, and this is splicing the film together. This is the look and feel of the film. Film. The look and feel of the film. Yeah, just own that. And Kent's going to be happy with me because I gave it to Dunkirk. You didn't. I didn't. <gasps> well, that's it. I know who the better Nolan fan is. Come Good on. night, everybody. Man, Joel, I can't believe you've proven to be the better Christopher Nolan fan. You better knock on it this off. Episode I'd of like to point out, Your Honor, I did not kill Christopher Nolan at any point on the history of Bacon's That Hell. is interesting. I killed him for Hold you. On. How Let's mark dare you? February... Well, should we say what day it is? <laughs> Magic of podcasting. <laughs> Sometime in February. Mm-hmm. I went with Baby Driver on this one. You went with your heart? Whoa. Yeah. Wait. No, my heart was wow. torn. Baby Heart and Dunkirk. Baby... <laughs> <laughs> Baby, baby Kirk and Dunhart. I Actually, think that's what that, that one is. That is a great buddy cop movie is Baby Heart and Dunkirk. <laughs> I love that one. It was a Care Bear movie, wasn't it? Yes, it was. 
<laughs> a really bloody Care Bear. Baby movie. Driver, because Baby Driver's editing is amazing because they do all the choreographed gunfights and and uh, chase scenes. It's all set to music. It's really well done. Yes, but do you think they're going to give love to Edgar Wright and to Kevin? You know, Spacey? it's hard because the way they tell that story in Dunkirk, like it comes together so wonderfully in a in an original way, even though it's not a super original idea. Mm-hmm. And so he, he kills it, but. D- Baby Driver is editing through and through, and it, I believe it is Edgar Wright's best editing. But I think from a film snob perspective, Academy perspective, they're looking at the three different timelines. They are. They wh- clear the are. mole and the sea. I, and- went, I went with style over what, sh- what will probably win. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I think Christopher Nolan's take on how he presented those three timelines yes. is going to wow the film snobs. Okay. I'm sorry, Christopher Nolan. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'm not. I'll talk to you about it at dinner tonight, Chris. You can't just call him Chris. We're hanging out. You Mr. Can. Nolan. He's coming over to hang out with the family. We're talking about this new movie. Yeah. And he's a bigger fan, obviously. What's his new movie about? He's not doing Bond, he decided. Oh, good. Yeah. All right, next category is Best Documentary Short Subject. Okay. First is Edith plus Eddie. Yeah. yeah. Edith and Eddie, ages 96 and 95, are America's oldest interracial newlyweds. Their love story is disrupted by a family feud that threatens to tear the couple apart. Wow. Wow. It's, it's actually very sad when you watch the trailer. Is it? It's very sad. Oh. Heaven is a traffic jam on the 405. Mindy Alper is a tortured and brilliant 56-year-old artist who is represented uh, by one of Los Angeles' top galleries, and she has anxiety, and she's undergone electroshock therapy. It's a very long description, so I have to just say she has a lot of issues, but she's able to express it through art. That's a fantastic title, honestly. Ooh, heaven is a traffic jam on 405. Thanks, Belinda. Right. Next category or next uh, nominee is uh, heroin. Three women fight to break the cycle one life at a time. That's not that's not helping. It's about it's about women helping heroin addicts. So it's like heroin, but heroin. Mm -hmm. It's a good play on words. Yeah, there's a little E in parentheses there. All right. Next nominee is knife skills. What does it take to build a world class French restaurant? What if the staff is almost Tommy Lee Jones? What if the staff is almost entirely men and women just out of prison? What if most have never cooked or served before and barely have two months to learn their trade? Wow. Yeah. The last one is traffic stop. Traffic stop. Heaven is a traffic stop on the 405. An African-American woman details getting accosted by police and opens up a conversation about race. There you go. Where are you getting yours from? I just shortened it. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You're good at that. Yeah. All right. That's the last one. What's your uh, choices, gentlemen? Edith plus Eddie is my choice because the really? internet said it's the front runner. Okay. So. Thank you, internet. <laughs> based on the description. Knife skills interested me the most because yeah, it it's, about, cool. it's about a restaurant made up of people who don't have any cooking skills, former felons, but they'll have, you know, knife skills. But as they're showing all these different people in their rap sheets, my wife, <laughs> I'm so sorry, honey. She leaned over to me and she said, I wouldn't trust any of these people to run my credit card. I would pay in cash. <laughs> it's like, you know, fraud and laundering. Wow. And like even the manager, he's a convict. He's a convict, too. And uh, so your wife is a judger. <laughs> I see. Okay, she's safe. But it's like it's that whole will they be? It's, it almost like was like uh, one of those Gordon Ramsay cooking shows. Yes, but with convicts, and I'm like they're gonna stab them at any moment. Like, it's a cool idea, though. It was really it cool. Is. But I gave it to Edith and Eddie as well because the trailer alone was heartbreaking. So Edith and Eddie, we agree. Edith and Eddie, up top. All right, next category is the best original song, and we got clips for film. The first nominee is Mighty River from Mudbound. And this is Mary J. Blige, Raphael Sadiq, and Horace Stinson. Can sway to this one, you know? It's, mm-hmm. it's nice. Can't you want to slow dance? It's it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, here is... Uh, <gasps> Can I announce this one? Sure. Sure. Mystery of Love from Call Me By Your Name. Music and lyrics by... Sufjan Stevens. Souffle Stevens? Oh, it's the first time I mentioned uh, Call Me By Your Name, so I'm going to read the oh, synopsis. Yeah, yeah. Souffle got uh, nominated. Yeah, Surfboard Stevens. Yeah. That's amazing. In northern Italy in 1983, a 17-year-old Elio begins a relationship with visiting Oliver, his father's 24-year-old research assistant, whom he bonds over their Jewish heritage and the beguiling Italian landscape. Mm-hmm. So 24-year-old falling in love. Very beguiling. 24-year-old falling in love with a 17-year-old to the sounds of Sufjan Stevens. Here we go. <laughs> Sufjan. You know me, Sufjan. Are you talking to Sufjan or Army Hammer? Sufjan. Just making sure. He just makes me happy. Sufjan. Sufjan does. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up. Uh, next up is Remember Me from Coco. Oh, by Sarah McLaughlin. Remember me. 
That'd be funny. Oh, that's got a good sound. Got a little Spanish in there. It's got a Bobby. Sarah McLaughlin was a producer on this song, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. Very Canadian. She's got a nice voice. Yeah, that's that's a good sound. We heard this song at like La Frontera the other day. I mean, there's <laughs> nothing special about that. It was Lorena's. Oh yeah, sorry. All right, next nominee is Stand Up for Something from Marshall. And this is a movie about a about a young Thurgood Marshall, the first African American Supreme Court justice, as he battles through one of his career defining cases. And it's got Common and oh, oh what's her name? I had it right here. Diane Warren. Hey, I just realized there's nothing from uh, The Greatest Showman. Uh, uh, what's the next one, Jake? This is me from The Greatest Showman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's The Greatest Showman about? Oh! That's funny because I just looked down and I thought that was the last one. It tricked me. Uh, so this, uh, The Greatest Showman, celebrates the birth of show business and tells of a visionary who rose from nothing to create a spectacle that became a worldwide sensation loved by Mormons in Utah everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> I haven't seen it. What? That's I haven't weird, seen so, it. Actually. I haven't seen any on here, actually. Joel, can I offer you some advice? Sure. Give this movie higher than a B, please. Please. Or else? For the safety of your children. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding you. Okay, so I listened to all these independently. Yes. Without looking at anything. Uh, and I just kind of listened to the music of it. And I was really, enjoy- I really enjoyed This Is Me. Like, it did. Like, as soon as it came out, I'm like, all right, I like this one. This it's, is good. It's full of good pop music. And Pop music. But then I watched the yep. video and I was like, whoa, this is not what I envisioned at all. It's hard to take a bearded lady seriously. I'll say that. You know, for some reason, it That's like a sound bite. Because in the, <laughs> it is. No, Joel, in this trailer, I was like, oh, that just is, it feels forced. It doesn't look like real. And then somehow in the movie, it actually, it doesn't, it isn't distracting. It wasn't well, no, for me. And, and I'm sure in context, it's fine. But like, yeah, going into it, knowing context, nothing, it, no, like, the, I mean, context, I knew, I knew it was, it was about the circus. The context no, it's is super, it's super fluff, but I wasn't distracted by her. And I knew, I knew the concept that it was the circus going into it. But then when I actually watched the video, I was like, I was so distracted by the beard. My wife, once again, I'm so sorry, honey. <laughs> She's like, I would not let her she serve was, me food. She was distracted by <laughs> the hair everywhere. Hair she was necessary. distracted by the very prominent anatomy of the bearded woman as she sang. Yeah. Because she's wearing a very low cut top. And my wife was worried that things were going to jump out at any minute. And yeah, no, so, this is good, clean fun. It's not going to happen to The Greatest Showman. I know. But at the same time, she and I were both distracted. We watched the music videos last night. She's kind of like, uh, so the, but I still gave it to This Is Me, Greatest Showman. I would love to give this one to Sufjan, <laughs> but I'm going with my head on this one. So I'm going with The Greatest Showman. Yes. And I'm doing that because this is a movie full of Fall Out Boy songs and Sarah Bareilles songs. Really? Or, or Taylor Swift songs. No, but it just sounds no. like all oh. sorts of pop music. Okay. And so... You look, just do this for the sake like of your Sia. children. It sounds like a bunch of Sia songs. Yeah, a bunch of Sia songs. I'm, I'm surprised... Sia. I'm telling you, you're going to like this I'm movie. I'm surprised Joel, Never, really? music. Never Enough didn't get the nomination here, but they went with This Is Me and it's an yeah, okay why. song yeah, from yeah. a forgettable no, soundtrack. It's an anthem. It's, it's, a, it's a power anthem. That whole thing is like, take me as I am. This is who I am. You know, appreciate yes. me. Yes, someone being used by a guy running Never a Enough is a better song, though. It is a better song. Yeah. So, yeah, This Is Me will win. All right. Next category, we're going to talk about live action short films. Let's Ba-ba-boom. go pretty quick on this one. The Call Be Elementary. Inspired by an actual 911 call placed during a school shooting incident in Atlanta, Georgia. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, man. The, can I just say, just for this one, the trailer? Yeah. It was very short, and it's just this kid walking up. The, it's like it's the school, and there's a desk in the office. And then they go. This person goes to the office and says, "Can I use the phone?" And then she goes to get the phone. He takes a gun out of his backpack, and it's Crazy. just like, "Oh wow, that is bad timing!" Like that is really yeah. just bad, bad timing. That's almost, that's just that's oh, man, that's really planned. It was stuff. uncomfortable. Uh, okay, uh, the eleven o'clock. The delusional patient of a psychiatrist believes he is actually a psychiatrist. As they attempt to treat each other, the session gets out of control. Never seen that before. My nephew Emmett, an uncle, protects his nephew from racist killers. The Silent Child. The Silent Child centers around a profoundly deaf four-year-old girl named Libby who is born into a middle-class family and lives in a world of silence until a caring social worker teaches her the gift of communication. It's kind of like The Miracle Worker. Yeah. And the final best live action short film nominee is all the DVD extras for Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> Watu Wot. <laughs> uh, or is Watu Wat. 
Want to what? For a decade, Kenya has been targeted by terrorist attacks of Al Shabaab. In December 2015, Muslim bus passengers showed that solidarity can prevail. Okay, that's it. What do you guys pick? Uh, I went with, uh, once again, watching all these trailers, I went with the 11 o'clock because that trailer was really entertaining. Like, I actually want to see that, that yeah, movie Yeah, of now. all those, that's what I wanted to watch most. But you picked? But the internet helped me pick The Silent Child. Oh. Ah, so, well, no high, high five. No, Whoa, no. we were going for it. Yeah. That got awkward. But no, I actually, The Silent Child was interesting. But <laughs> at one point, oh my gosh, honey, I'm so sorry. <laughs> You are throwing her under the bus. I, I'm, I'm so sorry, Eddie. I love you. Um, but <laughs> at one point in the trailer, because she says, uh, am I a bad parent? Because she said, I didn't even know she was deaf until she was three and a half years old. Does that make me a bad parent? I don't think so. My wife goes, no, she's a bad parent. You should know by three and a half. <laughs> <laughs> How does your wife know with all your That's kids? True. I mean, does she just deaf? yell at them? Well, no, I mean, my daughter is, you know, just over one. She's not even two yet. And already she's communicating and talking. She's like, if they would have made it to three and a half and none of that would have happened. Yeah. We probably yeah. would have picked up yeah. on How something. How do you notice? How could you not notice that? Yeah. yeah. I love you, honey. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. All right. So next category is best cinematography. I love this one. Yes. Yeah, we're getting back Camera to the good work. stuff. Yes. The first nominee for best cinematography is Roger Deakins, Blade Runner 2049. Replicants. Good looking replicants. And next one is Bruno Del Bonnell, uh, Darkest Hour. That's the exact pronunciation. Never give up. Uh, Hoyt, Churchill, right? That's pretty good. Thank you. Oh, I love this name. This is great. Hoyt Van Hoytima, uh, Dunkirk. I'm in a plane, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, well. <laughs> no, I was going to do the same thing, but why? Why? <laughs> the joke is there. It's Leave it there. Done. All right. All right. Uh, Rachel Morrison uh, for Mudbound. That's the one with Mike from Breaking Bad. That's true. Yeah, I've seen that one. Oh, yeah. And finally, uh, Dan Lawson, The Shape of Water. <laughs> this is The Shape of Water. We can't, we can't see Ooh, that. Don't do that with your hands. <laughs> <laughs> Family friendly? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so that's cinematography, it. camera work. Uh, I want to get into this one. Roger Deakins has never won an Academy Award. He's been Blade nominated so many times. Like, in, in, Here's the thing. He may not be a household name to everybody, but you have seen his work in so many movies. Do you I'm, remember anyone in particular? Well, I, I remember directors he's worked with. Look him up real quick. Doing it. Like He's worked with Spielberg. He's worked on just so many great films in the past 30 years. Uh, okay, so he's got Hail Caesar. There you go, Kent. No. Uh, Sicario, Unbroken, Prisoners, Skyfall. Skyfall! Rango, True Git, A Serious Man, Revolutionary Road, Doubt. Yeah, No Country for Old Men. He's got a lot of these. Mm-hmm. And this is just wow. in the last couple of years. I mean, this guy's got... He's, oh, Brother he's a Lerard legend. Thou, a Beautiful Mind, Shawshank Redemption. Yep. What? Hudsucker Proxy. Jeez, he's got quite a list. Yes. Yeah. He's maybe the best cinematographer ever born. But never won? Never won. This is this is his year. Except this year. Yes, honestly, he'll win for Blade Runner 2049. And he probably this is, should, yeah. This is why I didn't give this movie production design, because I thought it was more what was captured in the shot rather than what was actually shown on screen. And so he should win for this, because every shot is beautiful because of him. Except I'm not going to pick that. Wow. I am picking the dog fights from Dunkirk. Okay. Also a great pick. Those were... Is mind-boggling it how real it, it felt like the, I mean, the whole movie has a, a great big scope to it and it's amazing i mean the academy loves sweeping landscapes and yes. you know broad horizons and so this has both of those but it also adds the action element into it and during those scenes of the dog fights in particular i was completely caught up in the imax you'll notice i haven't been very nice to dunkirk you tonight. Have not. Cause, well, because because I'm the bigger Nolan fan. Yeah, we I'm not going with that. my heart. I want to win this one i want to win that caveman burger you didn't even know we were going to caveman burger to win i know it. but i wanted just to win <laughs> I, but I wanted to gibberish at the end there. Yeah. <laughs> bitty, bitty, bitty. Bitty, 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 bitty. All right, guys, it's time for my favorite sequence of this evening, In Memoriam. This oh. is where we say goodbye to all those things we lost in 2017 in hushed tones. <laughs> You're somewhat irreverently. <laughs> and we'll try to read them correctly, which we haven't been able to do all night. <laughs> nope. Rest in peace. DC trying to make a difference. You excelled with Washington one- DC. No. Oh. <laughs> no, Joel. Oh, no. <laughs> just wonder if we're you getting think, political on big He's he just like no. Hush tones. <laughs> Hush tones is memorial. You think Washington DC ever tries to make a difference? No. You excelled with Wonder Woman, but your fear of movie bloggers led you into into a self fulfilling prophecy of sabotage. In the future, trust your directors, satisfy your true fans, and let the critics rant on their own. 
Rest in peace. Any chance of Disney halting production of live-action remakes of beloved animated classics? Indeed. With the redundant Beauty and the Beast making over $1 billion at the box office, you've made this bed world. Now you have to sleep in it. Here comes Aladdin. Oh, but don't insane. forget that I warned you when they finally come for your precious fox and the hound. I'm Todd. I'm, I'm a, a fox. fox. I'm Cum Cup. <laughs> Somber. Rest in peace. Any attempt of finding Kylo Ren intimidating? <laughs> <laughs> after seeing Kylo Ren caught off guard after he was doing some shirtless crunches, I can no longer see any evil in him. In fact, if Luke saw that vision years before, he wouldn't have been so scared. <laughs> Rest in peace, naked chicken chalupa. <laughs> you were fun to say, less fun to eat. <laughs> Rest in peace, my single digit kiss count. <laughs> I started. Humble brag! I started 2017 with is four. It though? <laughs> no, it's not. It's embarrassing. Okay, guys, this is serious. Sorry. Okay, sorry, 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 sorry. I started 2017 with four kisses under my belt. I walked away with 11. I can now essentially retire from kissing. But you won't. But I won't. But I could. Just right. like Daniel Day Lewis. <laughs> Rest in peace, dark universe. <laughs> Starting off with the mummy was your first misstep. Then you decided to pull the shoot too quickly and throw in a Dr. Hyde, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde storyline. Everyone knows shared universes need to start out with their biggest guns, right, DC? It's messed up. <laughs> it's real messed up. <laughs> is it dead, though? I don't know. It is. It, it officially is. is it? Wait, they're really not going to do anymore? Yeah, they're not going to do anymore. Because I heard something. They announced the cast for every one of us, and they're not going to do it. Really? Yes. I'm going to look into that. They after. just don't. Why? How can they not know how to hush do that? Hushdown, hushdown. Move on. Rest in peace. The 128 people killed in John Wick 2. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. No one believes is that, that all? No one believed that John Wick would come out of retirement twice to beat his kill count of 77, but he constantly finds a way to raise the bar and shove it through some dude's face. <laughs> well done. Well done. Rest in peace, funny award shows. Remember when Billy Crystal ran things and people getting awards had a sense of humor instead of a political agenda? I do, and I miss it. Rest in peace, harassment issues in Hollywood. You've now found every guilty party <clears throat> and managed to save show business itself. Now, please tell us how to live our lives, too. Well, that kind of dovetails nicely into this one. Rest in peace. Any discussion and or jokes regarding the Me Too movement by straight white males? Don't do it. Because no matter how insightful or funny you may seem, you're going to get a lot of backlash and possibly get put on the list. <laughs> no comment. No comment. Rest in peace. Comedy and late night talk shows. The only way that a late night host goes viral now is if they take a political stand and cry on camera. Your courageous soapbox cannot be toppled. I never thought I'd ask to see more of Jimmy Fallon's What's in Your Box segments. I love those. So sad. I love those. So sad. Rest in peace, Mjolnir. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I'm sure you'll come back into play somehow after being destroyed, because Thor needs his hammer like a Marvel audience needs their post credit sequences. He's not the god of, god of hammers. However, I just like proving that I, can, that I know and I can say your name, Mjolnir. Rest in peace, my non-intimate feelings towards Aunt May. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> non-intimate? I know. It's kind of weird. With every reboot, you keep getting younger. It's like he says non-intimate, but he still brings wait, up the word intimate. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> every reboot, she keeps getting younger, or you just keep getting older? <laughs> oh, that is deep. <laughs> Excuse me. Can we have some reference Yes, sir. Here? Yes. Until you finally became Marissa Tomei. May, you're single. I'm single. Let's show some great responsibility and create the great power of no, love. Don't. <laughs> Rest in peace, two broke girls. <laughs> After two and a half men ended, you were the only thing that could fill Kent's need for hilarious CBS comedy. He was really hoping to get that seventh season, but now he's just going to have to go back to watching The Big Bang Theory. Shame on you. <laughs> Shame on you. I wanted to put that in there for, for calling you. me out. Thank you. You weren't brave enough to do I, it on your I, own. I appreciate it. I, I watch that show with 32 other million people every single I'm week. I'm here for you. And I'm finally brave enough to say it. Yep. Rest in peace, Finn. When you sacrificed yourself to stop the giant <coughs> loser on Not Hoth, you not only saved your friends, but also your character arc. Oh, wait. He's not dead? He's not dead. Oh, in that case, shame on you, Finn. 
Shame on Rose. Rest in peace, my screenplay for the Emoticon movie. <laughs> you beat me to it, creators of the Emoji movie, and you showed me the world may just not appreciate a half-baked story about dated technology. Rest in peace, my judgment for anime fans. I thought that 100% of you were perverts that drew naughty pictures and spent thousands of dollars on collectible anime schoolgirl <laughs> school figurines. But now that I've seen and love the movie Your Name, I only think 97% of you are perverts. <laughs> Oh, wow, it went down. Yeah, 3%. That's amazing. Rest in peace, non-political entertainment. Movies, TV, and music have all gone off that cliff. Now we lost sports. Next up, board games. Get ready for hungry, hungry health care. <laughs> I love it. Rest in peace. Any hope for Matthew Vaughn sequels? Matthew, you brought the world great adaptations of Kick Arse and Kingsman. <coughs> then you decided to keep going. Please don't listen to motivational posters. Quit while you're ahead. That's a good point. The mm -hmm. sequels aren't good. Yeah, it's terrible. Rest in peace, my expanding collection of Star Wars movies. I considered buying The Force Awakens, but I wanted to see where the franchise was going first. Now that I know, I think I'm going to stick with the original six. Thank you very much. Wow, the original six. That's so brave. I already bought, really? I already bought the prequels. So you, you, why why did you do that? I was, it was a gift. You're going to buy the rest. No. You will. No. Give it time. I won't. I won't let you. I don't own any of the Matrix sequels or any of the Pirates of the Caribbean sequels. They, they never made those. No. Ever. Rest in peace, La La Land. <gasps> Face it, you lost the Oscar and will never be remembered. And now, with audience musical favorites like Beauty and the Beast and Greatest Showman, you just don't have the staying power. Shame on you for having an actual story with genuine emotions. Shame on you. And finally for me, rest in peace, Nirvana. After Kent and Jacob decided, to, <laughs> after Kent and Jacob decided to push their personal agendas, you fell much too early on our '90s alternative bracket. That's about right. Even though everyone basically agrees you are the greatest alternative '90s band, we don't. Agree. Also, R.I.P. Jacob and Kent's musical credibility. I said sorry. Okay, I'm not sorry. I am a little bit. There you go. Okay, so uh, woo. A lot of memoriam there. Hopefully no one was laughing in those because A, they weren't that funny, and B, <laughs> yeah, that was sad. We're going to get so many angry letters. <laughs> <laughs> I hate when we get letters. All right, let's burn through the big categories. Yes. These are the big ones. Is that what we do with those? All right. Best original screenplay. All right. All right. First nominee is The Big Sick. Oh, we haven't talked about this one yet. No, Not at all. Pakistan-born comedian Kumail Najiani and grad student Emily Garter fall in love but struggle as their cultures clash. I'm so proud of you on that one for getting. Why am I whispering? I'm proud no, of you. You weren't whispering anymore. Next nominee is Get Out. An overrated but clever horror flick gets too much buzz. <laughs> it's time for a young African American to meet his white girlfriend's parents for a weekend in their secluded estate in the woods. But before long, the friendly and polite ambience will give way to a nightmare. <laughs> Next one is Ladybird. Garden State for Millennials. Ha! We'll go yeah. with that. Yeah. Uh, the Shape of Water. <laughs> Love me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was doing sign language back and saying yes. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. Do something, Sheriff. It's good. Yeah. It's good. All, All right, right. So an original screenplay means just from the movie, nothing came before it. It is only the movie that started it. The right. All right. What do you guys think is going to win? I this? would love if this one went to the Big Sick because this movie came out of nowhere. That's the only nomination for the Big Sick. Yeah, and it's a very. I, I'm not going to say it's underrated because really anyone that sees it really enjoys this movie. Mm -hmm. It's really funny, and I don't actually love stand up comedians as much as most people. And and even his act, I don't care for. But man, he did a great job. There's some inappropriate jokes here that I laughed way too hard at. So what's new? And it's a it, yeah, exactly. Get loves fart jokes. It. I wish it would win, but it's not going to. This one is straight up going to get out because this movie needs to get something this year. I disagree. Okay, and it's only because and this is just me. The Academy has a history of ignoring horrors and horror movies and comedies. Yes, but this is the year for that kind of movie. It could be, but I think it's going to go to Shape of Water. Really? I think Shape of Water is going to steal the original screenplay just because it was such an un, a, unusual yeah, Unusual movie. is the right word. And, an, yes. and the fact that it's in there weirds me out. That this and It's almost a sci-fi horror itself. Yes. But the, I, think it's gonna, I think that one's going to go to uh, Shape of Water by Guillermo del Toro. Okay. All right. Next category is Best Adapted Screenplay. And this is the one that came from another work, such as a book or a play or anything like that. All right. We're down to the last, well, the few. Yeah, we got like five, four or five left. Yeah. All right. So first is Call Me By Your Name. We've already talked about that one. It's the one about pedophilia. <laughs> yeah. Right. 
I just, okay, can I just get into that now? Yeah, let's do it. I just feel like it's so tone deaf yeah. in this year of Hollywood saying, oh, we're so against, you know, all these allegations and stuff like that and harassment and Kevin Spacey. No, if Evan- Kevin Spacey played Army Hammer's role, I mean, look, I mean, he probably would- wanted to, honestly. Oh, God, no. No, here's the thing. It's like, <laughs> this is a tone deaf movie. This this guy, this the father, who's very good, uh, Michael Stur- Sturberg in this movie, is very good. But his work associate comes in basically... Hooks up with his son. Yeah. And then he's like, son, that's his, probably his a good thing. My work, son. my work associate kind of hooked up with you. Yeah. And it just bugs me that it's got all this attention. And I'm like, do you not see how tone deaf it's, this it's sounds? A, it's a pretty movie. And that's what I hear. Yes. Well, it's got Sufjan Stevens in the yeah, soundtrack. It's fantastic. Yeah. All right. Next nominee is The Disaster Artist. Oh, hi, movie about a movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, when an aspiring film actor meets Tommy Wiseau, they form a unique friendship and travel to Hollywood to make their dreams come true. Yep. Next up is Logan. She, get, shirk, I'm, shirk, shink. I'm getting old, bub. <laughs> uh, in the near future, a weary Logan cares for an ailing Professor X somewhere on the Mexican border. Scott, <laughs> he's dead. <laughs> oh, spoiler alert. Yeah. Well, that's right. It's before the movie even starts. All right. Next up is Molly's Game. The true story of Molly Bloom, an Olympic class skier who ran the world's most executive high stakes poker game and became an FBI agent. She became an FBI agent? Yep. Not in the movie. Not in the movie. Target. It says Target. <laughs> FBI Target. <laughs> <laughs> We're keeping that. Became <laughs> uh, <laughs> an FBI Target. Can't that tonight. changes things a lot. <laughs> well, I said that like a whole lot. I, it sounds as, like an awesome movie. No, I read that and I went, did I add like, that in? I'm like, is this something in sense. the memoir? Like, yeah. that really surprises me that that is what happened. Okay. Uh... <laughs> I uh, usually trust your facts, Joel. Yeah. All right. And finally, Mudbound. And we talked about this one. This is uh, racism post-World War II. Yes. And music. Okay. So that's all of them. What did you choose? So this one is tough. Like, honestly, I think Logan is better than it has any right to be. They nailed the, the Wolverine Logan saga in one movie that they yeah, couldn't do in two previous movies. Yeah. It was great. And, and they made it a Western. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Molly's game, uh, very entertaining, right up until the end when she becomes an FBI agent. <laughs> I know, it's right? It's way too predictable. I that's, can't read. That's the Snyder Cut, You honestly. guys found it out my secret. I can't read. <laughs> oh, oh. I don't really care for Jessica Chastain. She monotones this whole movie, but she plays the character well enough. As far as the screenplay goes, though, it's, it's Aaron, Aaron Sorkin. Sorkin. Yeah. Directs and writes this movie, but yeah. it's going to the disaster artist because this is a very popular book. Really? And they take what needs to be seen on screen and make it really digestible. Even with the controversy sounding, surrounding James Franco okay, and his look, That's the only thing that could stop this movie from winning is the controversy. I put it as well. Disaster okay, artist. Okay, high five. Because I feel like it was such a unique take doing a movie about such a bad movie yes. and then playing the actor and who's still legendary alive, status. Yes. I think that's a very interesting take and I hope they give it the award even because it's not this isn't James Franco this is uh Scott Neuenstander and Michael H Weber who yep. who wrote who based on the book by Greg Sestero and Tom Bissell. Like yes. James Franco is not attached to this win but I'm afraid people will still att- associate him Honestly, with it. Honestly, it, it might lose for that reason. Yeah. By the way, so I was going to say this. Traditionally, the the best actress is giving the award by the best actor yep. and vice versa. Best actress, the best actor. That's how traditionally it's done. But with the accusations against Casey Affleck. Yeah, he's backed out. He's not attending the Oscars at all. So we don't know who's going to be presenting the award for best actress. Anyway, random side note. Huh. I should have saved that for the best actress category. I'm sure they'll make it some activism oh, well. thing, honestly. Probably. Yeah. All right. Next category. Big one. Best <sighs> director. Ooh, okay. Now, I didn't stress about these at all. Um, no, this one and the big one, the biggest stresses. The big the, yeah, the big one. Best director and best picture tend. They can match. They, they don't always match, but it's like that. I think it's like 50-50. It'll go with the director. It goes with the best picture. Sometimes it won't. So it really is a crapshoot. Yes. But I Let's hear had it. such a hard well, what are the time. Wait, 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 yeah, yeah, wait. Yes. Nomination, nominations. So first is Christopher Nolan I for Dunkirk. You. I love you. I love you. My name's Kent. Jordan Peele, Get Out. He is the, by the way, he is the third, Jordan Peele is the third person ever to be nominated for Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Screenplay for a single film. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Crappy year. <laughs> what? Gre- Gre- wow. No, with all this other competition, it's true. Yeah. Uh, Greta Gerwig, uh, Lady Bird. Caca! Make me a bird so I can fly far, far away. That's not part of the movie, but uh, pa- uh, Paul Thomas Anderson, Phantom Thread. I'm going to mess with your head. Guillermo del Toro, The Shape of Water. 
This is his first nomination for Best Director in his years of work. Wow. wow. Which is mind-boggling. All right. That's yeah, all Pan's of them. Labyrinth and everything. That's yeah. all of them. What'd you pick? Oh, my gosh. I'm stressing out right now because... Did you, want, did you go with Dunkirk? Here's the thing. So, for the Utah Film Critics Association, we did director and film, and Christopher Nolan came up uh, in the top two for both of these. In fact, we did pick him for Best Director, and I, I definitely spearheaded that effort. Because since I actually had some say in something that could win, yeah. Nolan was going to go all the way. Right. But I can't go with my heart on this one because I want to win. Like, I would you love to win that mountain, the caveman burger. If, if he's going to win anything, go with your heart, Kent. if Nolan's going to win anything, it be would be director and not best film because many people don't see Dunkirk as a narrative. They don't see it as a film experience. And so he win, would win as a director because of the work he put in here. But he won't. And it makes me so, so sad. Maybe he will. No, it's Guillermo del Toro. He's definitely going to win for The Shape of Water. Everything I read, it was between del Toro and Nolan. And I had such stress about this because I'm like, this could be the year they finally give Nolan the compensation award because yeah. he's constantly making these quality films that get nominated and then he never gets he never nominated. Does. Yes. And then uh, he in, fin- in fact, fun fact, it was because of the Dark Knight got shafted in 2008 yeah. that they uh, introduced more than five nominations for Best Picture. Yeah. Because and it was like nine after that. Yeah, well, they said it could be up to 10, I think, is yeah. what they say. And this is, this, like I said, this is Guillermo del Toro's first nomination as Best Director. This is also Christopher Nolan's first nomination as Best Director. This could be it, but I'm giving it to Guillermo del Toro as well. Yeah, sad high five. That was my band's name in college. <laughs> sad high five? Yeah. We mostly just played Sarah McLaughlin covers. Oh. All right, next category is Best Actor. Timothy Chalamet. Call me by your name. Chalbait. Chalbait. <laughs> Child, no, no, child he's, bait? He said he gel said? bait. And then you, he said gel bait. <laughs> I just, you I just like a slur there. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Day-Lewis, Phantom Thread. I will draw your dress and then retire. <laughs> I don't know why he's Spanish. <laughs> he's he's not Spanish. I will find you. Uh, Daniel Kaluuya, get out. Second place. Thank you. Gary Oldman, Darkest Hour. What? <laughs> Denzel Washington, Roman J. Israel. This is one I've seen that Ken hasn't. I have not seen this one. I saw Roman J. Israel. In fact, this is the first it's This is Esquire, the first time we're talking right? about this. Yeah, Roman J. Israel Esquire. This is the first time we're talking about it, so I'll read the synopsis. Roman J. Israel Esquire, a driven, idealistic defense attorney, finds himself in a tumultuous series of events that leads to a crisis and the necessity for, his, for extreme action. This is his, if I may say, Rain Man. Oh, okay. He plays a very different character, and it's actually quite compelling to watch him. He is quite compelling to watch. The movie surrounding it is very. It didn't get a lot of buzz. No, but he. I got when he got the Oscar nomination. I went. I could see that because he's playing something different. Okay, but this one's going to Gary Oldman. I don't think there's any question in my mind. It's going to be. It should be Gary Oldman. Yeah, that's my pick as well. Joel, have you seen that one? I have not. You should. It's fantastic. What? What? (laughs) All right. Best actress nominees are Sally Hawkins, The Shape of Water. Uh, <laughs> we're we're getting to the end of the show, yeah, folks. We're, <laughs> we're tired. We've talked about these movies way too much. You're bored too. Francis McDormand, three billboards. Et cetera. Let the young people have the awards. I'm tired of getting them. That's actually probably exactly what she'll say. That's what she did say. Really? At the Golden Globes. Oh man, that's great. <laughs> really? Basically, that's what she said. Uh, Margot Robbie, I Tonya. Hey, Puddin. Mm, Margot Robbie. Sorsha Ronan at Lady Bird. <laughs> <laughs> we really, we really need, better a, for we need a better zing for Lady Bird. Like, How with an Irish accent? Uh, Lady Bird is just this coming of age story about a girl who's trying to find I'm an emo. Is. I know who I am. <laughs> and Meryl Streep in the post. First oh, thing for the post. Yeah. Well, I, I was going to say, I got to do that one. Uh, this is, man, it's just a boring description. This is a power of for journalism about the, uh, which newspaper was it the post it's the pentagon papers Could it be yeah. the post oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm having issues uh but it's about the pentagon papers and it's it <laughs> this is Mer- okay so this is meryl streep's 21st nomination she broke her own record and still is the most nominated performer of all time john williams is the most nominated yeah. individual, but living she could individual. be in a commercial and get nominated for an oscar it's just ridiculous Not because she's that good so the post the post got two nominations for the entire thing and it's Best Picture and Best Actress. Because no one really cares about this movie. Even though it's Steven Spielberg, Tom Hanks, and Meryl yeah. Streep. I think this is kind of showing... It's super Blansville. That they're kind of fading out of the spotlight. Yeah. And yet, it's an automatic nomination to Meryl Streep? Of course it is. Why? 
She got one from Florence Foster Jenkins. I, I mean, know. why not this one? Actually, she does a fine job. It's just it's Meryl Streep. It's just Meryl Streep. You're like, picking Meryl yeah. Streep? No. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Or what are you picking? I'm picking Frances McDormand. As am I. Rightly so. She's, she's going to it, and she's going to be crass, and they're going to have to bleep her. Look, if they want to go for someone uh, like the It Girl, they'll give it to Margot Robbie, because she really does do great. There is a scene in I, Tanya where she is like removing makeup in the mirror, and she's basically looking at herself for like four or five minutes just crying in the mirror, and you're like, that's, I mean, it's an amazing scene. Hug her, huh? Yeah, honestly. Yeah. Well, I mean. Well, I'd love to see Sally Hawkins get it, too, because I've liked Sally Hawkins for a while yeah. in various roles. And I'd love to see her get the attention like this because she's a good actress. It's a different kind of role, but it will be Frances McDormand. Gentlemen, are you ready? We are ready. Yes, we are ready. What blinking time is it? Late. For Best Picture, the nominees are Call Me By Your Name. Kent. Your Name! (laughs) Darkest Hour. 3 (laughs) a.m. Dunkirk. (laughs) Harry Styles. (laughs) Get Out. Get out! Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> you guys are nerds. Lady Have you bird. seen the movie? That made perfect sense. <laughs> I have seen it. I'm like a bird. I only fly away. There you go. Finally, you got one. I had to save some, Jacob. <laughs> the Phantom Thread. The Phantom Nose. So, 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 dresses. The movie So So? No, because it's so yeah, 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 Phantom it's, Menace. Yeah, it's, okay. it's good. <laughs> yeah. uh, the Post. Waffle Crisp. Fruity Pebbles. Cocoa Pebbles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I believe okay. uh, Honey Bunches of Oats Also by Post Nice The Shape of Water Apparently pear shaped <laughs> <laughs> Can I say that? Yeah And finally Three billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri One Two Three billboards Ah 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 Solve the murder of my daughter <laughs> well, you, yeah. What did, did you, you just say? Just do? Did you just <laughs> You held on. You did the Count's voice in a very serious and tragic film. Yes, <laughs> it's fiction. Oh man, took me a second on that one. <laughs> I think this is between two films. I would love if Dunkirk did well. And I made if, those all up on the spot. I want you to. Know. I know that's great. So I'm the proud quality of you. wasn't great. <laughs> what if Get Out won? Like, wouldn't this be crazy? No, it that, would be, but they're not going to give it yeah, to a horror it's movie. Too crazy. They're not going to. So it's between Three Billboards and Shape of Water. I would say it's between three billboards, Dunkirk, and Shape of Water. You really think Dunkirk has a chance? I do think Dunkirk has a chance. Vegas odds are against it. It's like 66 to 1 for Dunkirk. Yeah, but that stays in Vegas. Oh, okay. I, I will move to Vegas if I had Dunkirk so much wins. stress. What were the chances for Moonlight? Uh, really well. What were the really chances good. for Spotlight? Remember when Spotlight came out of nowhere? Yeah. Like it, it was between like The Revenant and something else that year, and then all of a sudden Spotlight got it out of nowhere. Yeah. It was bizarre. And that could happen this year. Ken, I want to hear your rationale here. For those two movies being the... For, for what you're going to pick. Look, I think Darkest Hour is great, but it's not the kind of movie that's a best picture winner. Call Me By Your Name could come out of nowhere and be the controversial choice that I is so cliche not. Oscars. Tone deaf. And, and, you know, Moonlight won last year. So Lady Bird, it's just too standard for an indie coming of age flick. It but is. people love Sasha Ronan. They do. Saoirse I love Ronan. Saoirse Ronan. Phantom Thread, no one cares. Post, no one cares. Shape of Water has all the steam behind it. And actually, three billboards, people are mad at the movie. It's a very good film. Why are they but mad? People are it? mad because it's winning a ton of awards, and they think it's very overrated and does not deserve to be remembered it, in history as a best picture winner. It, it it seems to me, if I may jump in here, Ken, that yes. Three Billboards is getting kind of the Crash reputation. Yes, where Crash is a movie uh, won back in ninety ninety eight. I just made that somewhere up. in there. Uh, it's right around that time, though. Maybe later than that. Was yeah, it like 99? It was like 99 or 99. I think it's like 2000. This is what we're getting off the weeds. Yes. But uh, Crash was all about racism in America and people, and it became this kind of everybody's racist movie. And that's what the joke is now is that it's this kind of, it won at the time because it was a hot button. I feel like uh, a lot of the backlash against uh, Three Billboards is because they're not, they seem to be celebrating racism or at least justifying it. No, but it's just about characters. Like I'm not a, saying what self, I say. I'm yeah, saying right. what they say. But yeah, I don't see how three down. billboards is just like trendy for right now. Like it's, it, no, it's not, not that it's trendy right now. It's more just they feel like the racism card uh, is the reason look, it's getting ahead. And it's also the reason. It I'll shouldn't. say this outside of Dunkirk. This is this is the, my favorite movie on the list. Three well, billboards? Even over Get Out. Yeah, Three Billboards, I think, is sensational. I don't love the Coen brothers. I do love Martin McDonough. And this is, he also did um, In Bruges. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love In Bruges. Right in Seven Psychopaths. I love Didn't his like writing. Oh, I, I love that movie. It's so really? weird. Yeah, it, it's strange. But so Three Billboards, I think, is hilarious, even though it's dark. And it just pulled me in, even though all these people are kind of crummy. By the way, uh, The Post, 
is the first Meryl Streep movie to be nominated for Best Picture since The Hours. And yet she has 20-something uh, nominations. It's absolutely silly. Just putting that out there. So, look, I have a favorite here. And Get Out is the first horror film since Black Swan in 2011. And I guess, is that really a horror movie? Mm, not really. No. Silence of the Lambs like in 91. Psychological thriller. So do you have a case here before we give our final picks, Joel? Yeah. It, for me, it really was between Dunkirk and Shape of Water because I cannot see the Academy giving the Best Picture Award to a sci-fi romance. Like, that just seemed so weird to me that it even made it in here. And the fact that it's Best Picture, yet all the signs are pointing to Shape of Water and Dunkirk. I disagree. I think Dunkirk is out of the running, and I hate to say it. Jake, what do you think well, is going to win? Well, he is a lesser Nolan Three thing. billboards. You think that's going to win? Mm-hmm. I'm going with Shape of Water. I'm going with Shape of Water. Are you really? That's what I landed on. I changed that so many Ooh. times today. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I landed on Shape of Water, and I went, okay, it's just locked It's in been so even that Shape of Water, I think, will win for Best Director, but Three bu- Billboards could easily win Best Picture. But so. I think it will be a Best Director, sweep. I think Shape of Water makes a lot of sense. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. There's our picks. And we want to know your picks. So go to BaconCell.com to download the uh, official bracket, uh, not bracket, but the form that you can fill out and then submit to us at Facebook or DM us on Twitter or send us an email at BaconCellPodcast at gmail.com. And if, if here's a fun fact. If you actually play this episode at the beginning of the 90th Oscars playing this next Sunday, you'll actually hear it in real time because this show is about three and a half hours long. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like it. So let's just wrap it up. Indeed. Shall we? If you want to find me, you can find me at 76 Joel on Twitter. You can find me at QuickWits. They perform every Saturday night at the Midville Performing Arts Center. For more details, go to QWComedy.com or go to the QuickWits Facebook page. Didn't mess that up! <laughs> if you want to find me on Twitter and Instagram, <laughs> find me at Kenny, uh, at Kenny3DD. No if you want to read, know, read my movie reviews, it's ShowtimeShowdown.com. You can find me on Twitter at Jacob A. Rogers. Go find Bacon Sale on Twitter at Bacon Sale. Oh, that's, that's where the good stuff is. They'll know when they listen to Kent's outro on the episode. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's <laughs> true. Yeah. All my mess ups in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll be good. And listen, I just want to leave you with this one image. Right now, I'm wearing a white shirt and tie tucked into basketball shorts. All grain is ordained for the use of man and beast <laughs> to be the staff of life. Not only for man, but for the beasts of the field, the fowls of the heaven, and all the wild animals that run or creep on the earth. <laughs> yeah. All grain is good for the food of man. For what he should be eating is grains. Hold guys, on, guys, at the same time. Three-way finger boop. Oh, my no. gosh. Oh. <laughs> that felt weird. It didn't feel weird. It felt right. I'm going to be single forever. I've always feared Willem Dafoe. Well, he's right outside the window, Ken. Honestly, it seems a little condescending now how nice he is. Grinding Nemo. Oh, no, Ken! <laughs> a family friendly. <laughs> there's a butt. Yeah, there's always a butt. Is it William Dafoe's? It's a fish no. butt. That what makes, kind of noise? That makes sense. <laughs> Don't don't keep playing into my joke. Glub glub kiss kiss. Remake of the creature from the Black Lagoon with a sexy twist. Family <laughs> friendly. I took it to the line. You don't have to jump over the line. You know I have to jump over the line. It's me. Love me. I am a terrible person. You are a terrible person. No, don't go. He's like I must. I'm so tired of character acting all the time. Willem Dafoe's back and he has a gun. <laughs> hey, Android girl. Do androids dream of electric running goslings? They, they definitely do. Nolan, 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 Nolan. I heart him. Give it all the Oscars. I want you to picture Willem Dafoe. Okay, I'm closing my eyes. Okay. Oh my gosh. I actually got the chills. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Eddie. I love you. Oh no, Primal Eden. It's hard to take a bearded lady seriously. It's like he says non-intimate, but he still brings Wait. up the word intimate. Molly's game, uh, very entertaining, right up until the end when she becomes an FBI agent. <laughs> Solve the murder of my daughter. He did the Count's voice in a very serious and tragic film. Yes. <laughs> it's fiction! <laughs> oh, man. Pakistan board comedian Kumail. 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 Pakistan board. Kumail. <laughs> Pakistan born Kumail. Oh <laughs> Pakistan board commu- <laughs> Kumiel. A suit wearing brief ca- briefcase bearing. A suit wearing briefcase. <laughs> Come on, Joel. <laughs> a suit. I didn't do my warm up. That's why. Ray Parker. Yeah, yeah we didn't do any warm ups. Yeah. 
Baby Heart and Dunkirk. You guys found it out my secret. I can't read. <laughs> oh. All right. So first nominee for best cinematographer. Uh, for the best. So <laughs> <it's your laughs> yeah. Ah, Joel, you've cursed me. Cut that out. I'm having it off night. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with my mouth? <laughs>